2-9. That is absolutely spectacular from Colin Osborne. Remarkable from Robert Thornton. Game wow. shot in the first leg. What a leg that is. 12 down. The only unbeaten player. Game shot in the second leg. This is Game beating territory. Did you want to go for the double 19? Game of course he shot. did. To get more relaxed. Game oh, oh boy. Double 18 for a shot monstrous 147. Bradley, Bradley Brooks. Good afternoon, welcome to the Moda Super Series where the action does continue and after this week we will have over half of the field for Champions Week. Joining us today here at the Live Lounge, an Aussie dude with attitude. I'm not even referring to the man alongside me, Paul Nicholson, Mason Whitlock, son of Simon, making his debut. It's been a big story. What will he be feeling right now? I think he'd be a little bit nervous because this is the first step on what could be a very long and successful journey. And when you have got a name like Whitlock, which is synonymous with Australian darts and synonymous with this area of England as well, I think that comes with its own pressures. But I think the preparation that Mason's had, I think he'll be ready for it. Yeah, we'll talk more about him and today in a moment. Let's just reflect on Group A, first of all. Victor Tingstrom winning what was a star-studded group. Yes, I think when you look at Thornton, Osborne and Whitehead in there, you automatically think that their previous success... Uh, in other places and particularly here with Conan Whitehead, that maybe it was in the script that they would be going to Saturday night f through the first three days. But I think what we've seen from Victor this week is a continuation of improvement since he first came here. He had his second visit here at the end of last year. This is his first visit here this year. And what you're starting to see with his qualification through uh, European Tour qualifiers as well in the Nordic and Baltic League it just tells you that he is improving. There's been so much chatter about him over the last year or so, saying this is the next big Swede. I think we're starting to see that alongside Anton Ersland, who has won a week here, that Sweden is starting to kick. Well, are we also seeing ADC Europe kind of take over? Because the last couple of weeks we had Andreas Harrison, who was an ADC Europe wild card, Jimmy Van Ski on Saturday night, the ADC Europe qualifier, and now Victor Tingstrom looking to make it three on the spin. Yeah, I think ADC Europe are having a, a very good time of it over the last few weeks, but expect that to continue. We want people to come from different countries as well. It's not just the Netherlands and Sweden. We're looking further afield to see whether we can get the next stars from the likes of Austria and some other countries in uh, southern Europe as well. But Sweden have definitely embraced the ADC tag. And if they were to get two winners out of three weeks, they'd be saying an awful lot about what's happening in the future. Right, let's focus fully on this week. Here is a breakdown for all of the group with Victor Tinstrom safely through to finals night after winning Group A. In Group B tonight, Conan Whitehead, Corne Groeneveld, the ADC Europe qualifier, Pete Burgoyne, David Wazuski, and Bradley Brooks, who actually hit a nine-dart finish in a local event last night. They're all in action this evening with this Group C. Because of Osborne and particularly Thornton dropping into it, it has become a lot more difficult than it might have been for the incoming players. I think from a reputation standpoint, yes. But if you were to look at the numbers for Thornton this week, he would admit that he has played nowhere near his best. I sincerely hope that uh, his arm is in, in good shape for the next couple of days because we want him to keep that perfect record, don't we? I know that he does. He wants to be 11 from 11 and making Saturday nights, but he hasn't got a weekly title yet. But in order to get a crack at that, he's got to make the Saturday through what could be a tricky group. You've got Mason Whitlock in there. You've got Aaron Beanie in there, who's coming back from injury, but a very capable player. And people coming in with zero pressure on their shoulders because I suppose people watching will expect Osborne and Thornton to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what the bookies are expecting then for this group. This is to win the group, and they are going with exactly that. Osborne and Thornton as the top two. Aaron Beanie, former two, a card holder, Quite unknown at the moment because he's back from an injury, 6-1, to one, and then the rest of them sort of battling it out. Do you see anyone emerging there to really threaten the top two? Yeah, I can see Whitlock having a bit of a say in this. It will depend on the kind of start that he has and how his staying power is in playing five games a day over the next couple of days. But I think you're right with Aaron. I think we just put him in the middle of the pack there because of his reputation as a former tour card holder. We don't know a great deal about his recent form, so I think that's fairly accurate. 
but the numbers and the likelihoods from Osborne are so much better than the other two coming into Group C. So that's why he's favourite, and I think he definitely belongs there. And just finally, Mason Whitlock, Kieran Smith, the first game. Is that the perfect first game for Mason Whitlock here? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. Kieran's only got one win in the first three days. So for Mason to come in, he'll want to somewhat peacock his way onto the stage and say, this is going to be my stage. If you give him someone who's only won one game in 15, that's ideal. So he's got to expose that. Right, let's get the action underway. Thanks, Paul. Right, let's see what is going to happen to Mason Whitlock on this long-awaited debut. And Paul Nicholson's already been busy. He met Mason a little earlier. Tell us about your darts journey. Did you play darts uh, much before you located to England? I used to play when I was really young, like 9, 10, up at... Because basically my whole family plays darts. I come from, yeah, my, both my parents. My mum was really good in Australia. My grandparents are phenomenal players in Australia. So, I, yeah, I've, I've always really played, stopped playing when I was about 12, 13, moved over, didn't really play much over here, and then, yeah, just through lockdown, just kind of found it again and fell in love with it. Has your dad told you much about some of the, the trips that he's made in Australia? Because what he re wears around his neck is very famous, isn't it? Yes, yes. He um actually, for my 21st birthday, he gifted me the first one he ever won, the Gold Nugget Classic in uh, Geelong, I believe. Alice Springs, sorry. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> yeah, it's at a place called uh, Tennant Creek, which yes, uh, is in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. in, in Australia, that's, that's definitely seen something. But your ambitions moving forward, what are the real goals over the next, let's say, 18 months, because you're still young, is it just to perform well at what you've got next? Well, uh, qualify for the World Youth Championship at the end of the year and then hopefully get my tour card in January. <laughs> Is that what you're looking to do? You're looking to almost fast track your way to playing with your dad on the Pro Tour? Yes, yes. Of, of course, it'd be, a, it'd be a dream come true for sure. And um, I, I know I can, I can do it, so... The Whitlock name is synonymous with the nickname The Wizard. Yeah. So at this early stage, we've got to ask you, what is Mason Whitlock's nickname going to be? The Apprentice. I think it fits absolutely perfect. And uh, yeah, I definitely took a bit of inspiration. But yeah, The Apprentice. And the apprentice is ready to set about his task here at the Modus Super Series. Great interview that with Paul Nicholson, who sat alongside me, Chris Murphy, for today's action. And the full thing is available on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. So if you want to watch that, make sure you've clicked that subscribe button and you can see that at the end of today's show. Perhaps a 21-year-old from Brisbane looking to follow in his father's footsteps. The first task is to take on Kieran Smith, who's only managed to win one game so far this week. As Paul and I were just discussing, that might be the perfect first job for the apprentice, Mason Whitlock, to try and uh, get a victory in this one. But Paul, just before we get into the match, just thought that was a very enlightening, first engaging little glimpse first. of that interview and it's well worth a watch, isn't it? Game because he, he spoke quite well there. Absolutely. I think when you've been surrounded by this sport for a period of decades, he talked about his mum, his dad, his grandparents, 54. all being excellent players. He wants to be a third generation player who has his own journey. And 100. it's not just talking to Mason as well. It's also talking to Simon about what he would love to do in the next couple of years because one of his 62. dreams, the Wizard, is to play on the Pro Tour with Mason. This is just the start of this journey and I'm really privileged to sit here with you and, and see it begin. 56. Yeah, let's see how it goes. He's got a similar stance to Simon Whitlock, hasn't he? A similar follow-through as well, but slightly different sort of way of delivering 57. the dart. That will evolve. Uh, I think if you were to look at his throw now and maybe have a fresh look at it in four or five years, 60. it will be different. It's the same with Simon. Look at him back in 2004 when he made, not 2003 when he made his World Championship debut at the Circus Tavern. And then you look at it now, it's very 45. different. 
but the fundamentals are really good. Well, that's for Kieran Smith. He's trying to do a lot better than he did. 59. In Group A this week. Only managed one win. That came towards the end of yesterday when he got the better of Robert Thornton. 85. 4-1. Really good scalp for him and something to have on the CV. But if he's going to be competitive, he's got to be earmarking probably his first two matches as victories today. 56. Playing Mason Whitlock and Aaron Beanie trying to catch them cold. Yeah, I think so. If he's not able to do that, then he's already in Group C peril. 85. And Kieran's left himself on Kieran something that Simon Whitlock was noted for for years. 80. Doesn't get the second treble. 105. And he's still looking Basically for his first Tom Plus finish of the week. Now Whitlock's not going to take it. And seven visits Kieran, you with the darts. 65. And Kieran can break immediately here in leg one on Thursday. Double top to do just that. Twenty-five. Close, but not close enough. Basically so an opportunity here for Mason Whitlock. Big number missed by a margin. Works his way across to tops himself. 40. And he's over the top. Kieran, you require 40. Just over 20% on the doubles for the week. Game shot on the first and that's just a little Kieran bit Smith. better than that, isn't it? An immediate break for Kieran. Gloucestershire hasn't got that Second much lag. of a, a presence in UK and English darts. In fact, they have, to my knowledge, a few decent players and one exceptional one in James Hurrell. Yeah, on the Pro Tour now, of course, did play here plenty of times, did the Hillbilly. Just looking at Mason Whitlock, we've got a great position behind the stage here at the Super Series, just looking down on the players. He was doing something in between legs there that his dad does so often, blowing into the hands with the darts in them. Mirror image. Yeah, if you didn't know Mason Cernium and you didn't see him in the face or the hair... You'd probably see it. 58. That's got to be something to do with Simon. The genetics are definitely there. <laughs> and let's face it, Simon's had a rather glorious career to date. And he's not finished yet. But he's not here. 59. In Portsmouth, supporting Mason because he's on his way to Germany today to play Cameron Menzies tomorrow. One hundred. sure he'll be sat in an airport or a taxi with his mobile phone out, so... If you are watching, Simon, hope you're well. I hope that Mason is not putting you through so, too much turmoil today. 58. It will feel like turmoil. It's a lot worse watching than playing, I can guarantee. Having no children myself, I don't know what it's like watching 81. someone who you've Here raised, but I can't imagine it's an easy thing to do. So much wisdom would have been passed down by... Simon Whitlock. 40. But once you're on the stage, you're on your own. That's the first start he's looking for. He has struggled 99. with that in this game so far. If that improves, he'll have a much better chance of winning this first match of Group C, of which there are 15 today and 15 tomorrow. Top two will qualify for Saturday to join Victor Tingstrom of Sweden. 74. Mason, you require 116. 80. Kieran, you require 36. Double 18 to double the lead. Game shot on a second. Not a position he will know too well this week, Kieran. 27 year old looking to start this campaign Third leg. a lot it's brighter to throw first. than he did. Game on. His Group A campaign. I wonder what he's feeling at the minute. Come waking up on Thursday morning. One win in 15, that'll do 45. nothing for anybody's confidence. But for some people coming here for a full week, it is a learning experience. You've got to figure out how you feel under pressure as to how you work with that moving 100. forward. It's going to 
take some time to settle in. Kieran Smith himself knows that. This is different to where he has been quite successful lately in some 55. local tournaments. We'll talk more about that later because one of our players has mentioned at the top of the show here a nine dart finish in a local event last night. But he has won some 61. of those events, Mason Whitlock, and they do involve some very, very talented players, not least his father. Last week, it'd be Daryl Pilgrim. 60. Are you a fan of the nickname? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's something that he will hope to move on from at some point in his career, but it yeah, does you... make perfect sense now. Yeah, you don't want to be an apprentice your whole life, but he'll be hoping not to get fired. He may, he may, he may become the wizard when dad retires. 96. Let's see if Colin Osborne's got anything to say about that later. Yeah, of course, he's playing the wizard in this group. It's a twist of scheduling. Right, switching here. Kieran Smith, who actually, 96. ironically, reminds me a lot of another Australian player called Corey Cadby. He's got a similar little hairstyle, but I think he's got a similar throwing action as well. Yeah, it's not that dissimilar. 45. I'll go back to something that Stephen K. Amos said, very famous comedian about Australia when he went there for the Melbourne 100. Comedy Festival. He came back from Australia and said, do you know what? When you go there, the mullet is alive and well. And the mullet is definitely alive and well with 59. Mason. Here you require 116. It's very Cameron Smith, their famous golfer, who won the Open Championship a couple of years ago. Well, it's a, a nervous start. I'm sure Mason wouldn't himself would be the first to admit that. Mason, you Maybe need something to spark a revival here. That wasn't a badly thrown dart, but it didn't find the target. Have you noticed he's using 65. the kind of darts that his dad used to Here use as well? 16. Somewhat original Whitlocks. Game shot on the third leg, Kieran Smith. So Smith makes it 3 0. There is that Four flag. It's Kieran to throw first. little Whitlock quirk passed down from generation to generation. It's a bit of a nosy thing as well, because when you play it in Australian settings, it's usually 100. quite hot. But it works in both climates as well. When your hands are a bit chilly and blow on them, give them a bit of heat. 134. But when it's a bit warm, you blow on them to... Just get rid of some of the perspiration. Well, that was a much more authoritative 60. start to a, a leg there from Whitlock. A couple of treble 19s on cover. I think he might be wise to keep going there. Well, what do I know? 76. Notice how his misses are very, very close to the wire as well. It's not like he's hitting the big five an inch high. These are small misses. 80. That last dart is a really good... We have describing what he's not doing. I get the feeling that once this first game is over, whatever the scoreline, he will feel so much more comfortable when he plays Colin Osborne in round two. And then after that, he's got Robert Thornton in game nine in round three. So it's not as if things are going to get easier. You mentioned that. I suppose 55. the word is grouping. His miss has been really close. And I think his father's one of the greatest groupers this sport has ever seen. 85. Problem is, if your first dart isn't where you want it, then you need to adjust, don't you? Not group. Precisely. Well, he's got a chance 45. here. Mason, Smith starting to struggle himself, and Whitlock hopefully smelling blood. If he can take this fourth leg, 40. Kieran, he's not out of this game. Because Kieran has been. Very frustrated this week at trying to get over the line. So him doing that in this game 42. is not guaranteed. Funnily 66. enough, at 3-0 up, it's Kieran that's showing more exasperation than Mason is, Game's who's just taken his flag, first leg. Mason Whitlock. He'll raise the eyebrows from the young man. Fifth leg, it's Mason to throw first. I did have a little chat with Game on. Mason this morning about the colour of the shirt because 
it has importance twofold, in my opinion. 58. If you look way back into Simon Whitlock's career, and I mean way back, even before he started wearing the famous 60. Australian shirt with the kangaroo on the front, he used to wear a shirt of this colour, did Simon? I've been reliably informed by Mason this morning that this is more to do with Melbourne Storm. 45. Famous sports team from one of the greatest cities on earth, I may say selfishly. 100. And you do tend to see a lot of people these days wearing dart shirts that are something to do with the team they follow. It's because they want extra inspiration. Ninety-seven. I did say that Mason is definitely not out of this match if he takes like four. I just wonder what he's going to be able to find from here. Nothing wrong 57. with his counting. Yeah, unsurprisingly. But is there a way back into this match for Mason Whitlock? He's got the darts here. Only a ton leaves Smith on a, a big out shot. And that's a wild one. Needs to put this right and does so. Tremendous fix. But it is a better chance than the previous leg for Kieran to get the points. Two points for a win. Nothing for a loss. And no draws in the Moda Super Series. 42. Chance to Mason bring that gap to one. 81. And he's at the hockey really quickly. Bullseye. 56. Fabulous line. Kieran, you but now this is the best chance that Kieran's had to win this match. 35. So 25 to clean Mason, up. You require 25. Double eight. Game Nicely done. Leg, Mason the game goes on. That's a 20 dart hold of throw. Just improving Sick incrementally in this match. Game on. Do you remember that famous saying that Phil Taylor came out with once, which we can't repeat, but we can somewhat tiptoe around? It, it could be any. You can't practice. There's two words after that that I can't say. It wasn't that Adrian Lewis? I think he might have followed with it as well. But until you've been on this stage, you just can't practice how you feel. It's true. What is 100. encouraging actually for both players is that they're 50% on the doubles in the game. So despite the fact there's been some nervy scoring visits in this match, the finishing's actually been spot on. 57. Yeah, fair point. Five hits from 10 attempts if you put their numbers together. But I think what's encouraging for Kieran, because it's very easy for us to get carried away with Mason on debut in this match. We can't forget about him. He's still got a chance of winning this match. 82. And if you look at his numbers from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday, they have gone up every day. If that trend continues, he might just put himself in a window of... 98. ...being more likely to pick up points. Let's face facts. He needs to do that. This could be the moment the match gets away 29. from Mason Whitlock. Kieran, you require Smith now has two visits to get rid of 170. 90. Nice switch. 96. In fact, it's more than nice. It's very decent. 100. An aggressive approach. Maybe should have looked at the bullseye 74. over the last start. Yeah, one two eight would have been a much more favourable finish than one three three, but it may be academic as the apprentice the match, is Smith. beaten in his opening match at the Moda Super Series. Kieran Smith, who took some time to settle himself, has managed to make use of the experience he's had this week and win for the second time on that stage. A four two success over Mason Whitlock, who yeah struggled in the scoring stakes. On debut, you couldn't find a two-treble turn, nor could Smith. Both players producing similar performances, really. The scoring, not really there, but the finishing was pretty handy. 66, the high for Mason Whitlock, who...
hit 50% of his attempts and 74 the high for Kieran Smith, who was even better than that. Four out of seven. Good start for him. And he picks up two points in his first match of Group C. Coming next then, Aaron Beanie back on a dart stage for the first time in a while. He takes on Robert Thornton. So game two of today's 15 fixtures here at the Moda Super Series features Robert Thornton, the two-time World Seniors champion, who's enjoying himself here on the Super Series stage, as always. And he takes on Aaron Beanie, a newbie here at the Live Lounge, but well-known to many darts fans. A former two-a-card holder was probably the most shocked person in the room when he himself won his two-a-card about four years ago. And he's now... Looking to sort of restart his career, the 40-year-old who appeared at the UK Open in that couple of year spell as a professional. Facing the Thorn, who is a force to be reckoned with. Now 56, a Scotsman. Still chasing that elusive Super Series title, apart from the fact that he's made the finals night every single time he's played. But Beanie... Well, he's looking to do something that Thornton's done many times in his career, which is recover from adversity to go on to succeed and reach greater heights. He's playing in a proper tournament, first as he leg. called it, for it's the first time first. since shoulder surgery, severe shoulder surgery as well. He's basically got a, a plastic sort of plate in there and is playing with, he called it, playing with a new arm. Um, so it's really going to be interesting to see how he gets on, but the opening signs are encouraging, Paul. They are, and it's great to have Aaron back. 55. One of the nicest guys you could possibly meet. In fact, both of these guys are, but they're on very different journeys. I think what happened with Aaron getting his tour card 26. four years ago now, it was very unexpected. And the amount of experience that he got over the next couple of years was invaluable. But you do wonder 41. what's next. What could possibly happen for him next? Because he must be strong in mind to be able to do what he's done before. 
You might think that coming through Q School was impressive. 81. Because it was. But what he did in his second year of being a tour card holder, for me, was more impressive. 45. He didn't play well his first year, but the second year, he lifted his levels, and he was someone that people didn't want to play anymore. He became a better player because of adversity. And he has started rather well here. So I think Thornton already knows that this is not going to be an easy match. A bit like Adam Lipscomb here 60. is the answer to a quiz question, Aaron isn't he, Aaron Beanie? It was on the receiving end of the first ever three-figure average by a woman in a televised PDC tournament at that UK Open that was mentioned at the start when Lisa Ashton beat Beanie. 42. And Robert's in his 16th match Aaron of the week. 112. He has admitted this morning that he has not been playing his best this week. He's struggled with a little bit of arm discomfort, but that won't stop him. Gabe and nothing stops leg. Beanie Aaron from getting Beanie. his first Tum Plus check out in his first leg of the week. Second Might go in for a bit of that shoulder first. surgery myself, Gabe Paul, up. if that's what it does to you. Yeah, same here. Sign me up. Beanie look, look, not looking like a baby up there. They made a film about that recently, didn't they? About Beanie Babies. I'm sure they did. I'm sure you were first in the queue to see it as well. It's on my list for later. 59. He's really good friends with Matthew Edgar, isn't he, Aaron? But Matthew's on his way to Iceland at the minute to defend his title after going to WrestleMania. Such a jet setter. But I'm sure he's tuning in right now to see his good friend Aaron. I look forward to having him back soon to talk through all the travel trials and tribulations that he usually gets himself into, Matthew Edgar. Well, he does choose to go to places like the Faroe Islands. Yeah, just looking through, his, like, he hasn't played a competitive game of darts since January 2022, Aaron Beanie, when he was playing on the Challenge Tour. Really is a big deal for him today. 100. Action looks good. Doesn't look uncomfortable at all. And when it comes to recovering from surgery, so often in this sport, we see people come back too quickly. Because these are predominantly self-employed darts players. And they feel the pressure of coming Probably back and they have 57. to earn. Well, okay. That's 34, which leaves 23. That leaves double three. <laughs> You're getting there, Rob. 51. That would have been eye catching that finish. Yeah, it would have been. It could almost have been the, the perfect mess, couldn't it, from Thornton there? He actually hit the single three. He's not the tallest of players, Robert. Robert. You require six. But he was still throwing leg, down to Robert that Thornton. double, which gives him his first leg of this group. One Third is leg. It's Aaron to throw first. First World Seniors Game title up. on double two did Robert Thornton. So down at the bottom of the board has been quite successful for him at times. He's been successful for a good... 43. Well, we're going to see a couple of decades because he was a great player before he was world master. Consequently, being 59. the 11th of April, two milestones today, and you might like a bit of on this starting day, but 25 years ago today, we lost the great Alan Evans. 97. But also a very, very big day in the career of Michael Van Gerwen. Back in 2009, on the 11th of April, he won his very first PDC title against his best friend, Vincent van der Voort. A Players' Championship in Taunton in Somerset. He'd go on to win 8 million more. Not literally. It's just a sign that 85. one of the greatest players we've ever seen. His journey has to start somewhere, and it just so happens that his PDC journey started on the same date in a calendar 84. year. When we first saw Mason Whitlock. I wonder if that's a thing in a few years. 
Well, not everybody does what Luke Littler does do there and starts off in that explosive style and carries on that momentum. Many players have to learn to lose before they can learn to win. That is one of the most equitable lines in darts. You do have to learn to lose before you learn to win because you learn more from losing than you do from winning. Okay, that looks like 20, which leaves 116. 40. Robert, you Robert would love a break of throw. He had to take the lead. He's not really having a great deal of fun down there, is he? Around the houses, isn't he? Hope he's got the meter running. 43. Aaron, you require 96. 96 for Beanie to punish. It's one of those situations where it doesn't go down as a missed double for Robert Thornton, but it is a mistake on a finish, isn't it? Sometimes stats can be slightly 56. misleading. In the end, it may not Robert matter. You require 40. Game shot Has the there ever there. been Robert anybody Thornton. better on that double? And I'm not just talking because he's here. Four you've all been it's watching Robert in the last 15 first. years. Has anybody ever Game been off. as good at tops as Robert Thornton? I can't think of anybody. Well, the treble 20 rejecting that second dart. Would have been a maximum. It used to be a running joke on the tour over a decade ago. When Robert was left on tops, he would just turn away and then start the next leg. He was that good at it. Is he as good at 16. it now as he was? Probably not. But he still leaves it a lot and hits it a lot. 59. 100. This week, Robert has averaged just under 80 for the week. 41. That will not be acceptable to him. And he's only won five games out of 15. That's a 33% win ratio. He'll want to improve that by doubling it 96. over the next couple of days. But that five-match win tally does take his total tally to 99 matches won here at the Moda Super Series. So this could be a landmark victory if Thornton can close it out. I would say he could raise his bat to the pavilion, but I don't think Robert's a fan of cricket. Probably just raise his darts to the air and say thank you. 97. Robert, you require 141. Treble 19. Just a few wayward ones as he moves around the board in this match, Robert Thornton. Still not seeing the, the kind Aaron, of standard that we have come to expect from him so far this week. That missed treble puts pay to that shot. 58. Robert, you require 74. Robert will go 14 here. He's a bit of a traditionalist. He's not bothered about the dart in the way. 54. But he should be. Aaron, you require 90. Gets two darts. Only Game needs one. Oh, Beanie and Beanie with a brilliant checkout of 90. I think you enjoyed that Bit one. Flag. It's, Aaron to throw first. it's one of those checkouts that when you go for it Game that way, it's because you need to get it. If Robert was on 251 or something like that, he's not going to go for 20s on 90. Double 15 41. is starting to be used an awful lot more these days than in previous times. Now Robert will be ruining the fact that he has 84. lost leg four. Had his chance to get that two leg cushion. He's got the only ton plus average for the week so far, Robert. 101.79 on Monday. 85. And at that stage, people were thinking that maybe Robert was going to have his way with Group A, but it turned out not to be the case. 40. He may look back at that previous leg and think, about that missed out a double. Big, big difference between 3-1 advantage 47. and 2-2 in this short race, especially 
Now that Beanie has the darts. Do you remember who Aaron beat in his Q School final back in 2020? No, remind me. Jared Cole. 27. And Jared had a fair few chances to win that match, but it was Aaron that took it. And there were two people who got their two a card that day. The other one was my roommate that week. 58. Jeff Smith. Yeah, we have seen him here recently at the Motor Super Series as well, and will again. He really enjoyed 60. it. A few former tour card holders have made debuts. Some players have gone on to achieve great things. Devin Peters and another one who loved life here at the Super Series. Do you know who else was in that Q school? 60. But didn't win their card outright. And when you think about it now, it sounds ludicrous. The sounding ludicrous bit has made the question a bit harder. I probably could have given you any one of 250 names then. I'll put you out of your misery because you might think this could go on for games, but Damon Hetter. Wow. He's come on quite well in the last four years, hasn't he? 94. I think there's only one or two players that are from the original Q school and still have their cards. Dave Chisnell. Chisnell was the first one answer, of them. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the other one, but I think there might be two. 23. Aaron, you require 116. This is for the lead for the second time. And for a second, Tum Plus finish. Two 18s. 88. Goldilocks. Robert, you require 133. Never good in this sport. Good to see that Robert's got his thinking cap on there. Travel 19 on 133 is definitely the right shot. Aaron, you require 28. Aaron now looking at double 14. Game he shot does have a 3-2 lead. Aaron Beanie. Same sort of standard that we saw in the first match. And if Kieran Sixth Smith flag, it's Robert to throw and Mason first. Whitlock are looking Game on, they will think if this continues, they're definitely not going to be out of today. Nothing wrong with the 180s from Thornton this week. He's got one per match on average. So 15 in the first three days. Eighty-four. But now that he's not holding that World Senior Championship trophy at his home in South West Scotland, 100. he'll feel slightly bitter that he hasn't got it. However... I'm sure he's very happy for John Henderson to keep it in Scotland. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be determined to get it back. 80. John Henderson, incidentally, one of the players that did get through that first Q school, wasn't he? I think the other one, just looking at the list myself, is Mickey Mantle now. There's a bit of a caveat that he has lost his two card, but then regained it straight away. On a couple of occasions, actually. It's a very hard thing to do. To keep your tour privileges for that long. 85. Just ask Robert. Ultimately, he lost his. But since then, he's won multiple senior majors. 140. And applied his trade elsewhere. Did go to Q-School this year, but seemingly more to be able to play on the Challenge Tour than any serious ambitions of getting his professional tour card back. 60. Now, is he going to get... Robert, you require 36. This leg and force this match into a decider. Decides to split. He does like double four. 28. I don't think there are many dark players out there that prefer double nine over double four. <laughs> dark players don't like odd numbers. 41. And right, they shouldn't. Robert, you require eight. Shouldn't have that problem in this leg. Four. Double two does not win him this leg. Aaron, you require one hundred. Like it did his first World Senior Championship, and Beanie's lurking, hoping that Robert still has trouble down there. In a game that he could steal away. Eighty-five. Robert, you require four. Double two then for parity and a decider. He's making it hard for himself here. Two. And Aaron, the you require Scotsman 66. is looking bewildered 
to have given Beanie this chance. 41 remaining. Double 16 for the match. And Aaron Good Beanie and has won it. Again, some fine finishing. Gets the win in that one. Beanie, four out of six on the doubles. He took out 112. That was really a, a sign of what he may go on to do in that game. But he punished Robert Thornton for mistake after mistake. And look at that. That just will not do, Robert. Two out of 13 on the outer ring for him. That's just over 15%, whereas Beanie was hitting two-thirds of his darts at double. And that is what got him over the line. A 4-2 success for Beanie. We will be back in just a couple of minutes when the wizard Colin Osborne takes to the stage, taking on Owen Bowden. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where the third game is about to get underway and it's a debut for Owen Bowden taking on the wizard. Colin Osborne, it looks like he's asking where all the cameras are. Maybe he's up to... Well, I think he's getting the, the guided tour from Colin Osborne who's played here just about as much as anybody on the Super Series stage. How it all works. There is a little screen by the players that shows them the score. Those who are regular viewers will know. Ten seconds between each leg. And the reason that Bowden is asking those questions is because it is his Super Series debut, given the full name there. Uh, Colin Osborne, 48 years of age from Middlesbrough, seven-time PDC event winner and has played on this stage, as I said, Paul, as much as anybody and has been very successful, of course, reaching the final of an entire series when he lost to a certain Luke Littler. It's pretty much the only thing he hasn't done here. He's won everything else. First leg, it's Owen to throw first. Game on. He's a centurion when it comes to wins. He's played an awful lot of matches. And he's had success in this arena 26. and our previous studio as well. But he's still got ambitions of doing a lot more. And so far this week, yes, he's dropped from Group A to Group C, but of the three players that did that, 
his numbers were far superior than the other two. Well, mention that Robert Thornton's on 99 wins here at the Super Series. 97. Osborne actually broke the century yesterday. He's now won 101 games on that stage. 95. He's throwing quite swiftly these days, the wizard, isn't he? Quite a whippy action. I suppose you could say the same for Owen Bowden. He is a type of player that can change the pace a little bit, isn't he? His throw lends itself to that if he's feeling good and confident. Think of uh, Raymond Van Barneveld. He can start a game slow and then speed up as it goes on. Oh, this is encouraging. That's the first maximum of the day. I've had to wait until game three to get it. It was a brilliant setup from Colin Osborne. His previous visit, scoring 136 to leave the 170. 40. But he hasn't taken much of a chunk out of it. Sixty-one. That'll do very, very nicely. One hundred and thirty. This would be for Colin's best finish of the week. In fact, it was yesterday that he got that, which was one hundred and twenty twice. Seventy-eight. Oh, when you require. Well, Owen 40. has a chance to hold in his first leg on this stage. That looks nice. That looks even the nicer. First leg, Owen Bowden. Hasn't had a massive journey to get here. Leg, but you do get the feeling, based on what we've seen in the last two or three minutes, is that stagecraft is something he's going to have to learn throughout the course of the next couple of days. 100. But if you're going to learn it from somebody, Colin Osborne's not the worst person to ask. He's been around in darts for about 20 years. Yeah, about a, a whipper snapper, 26 years of age from Dorset. I've seen him play some dev tour stuff over the years. Not much on the challenge tour. He only actually played in five 100. challenge tour events. Do you know what stops a lot of, I'm going to say talents and young talents, 80. from going to things like challenge tour and some other tournaments? It's money. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think these days, just because you've got talent, it means that you 100. should attend everything you possibly can. It doesn't mean that everybody's got the means to do it. 82. And what's given him the opportunity here is that link up with the ADC that we have at the Super Series and that is bearing real fruit recently. 100. Begs the question, doesn't it? Domestically it works. In Europe it works. Where's next? Watch his space. But yeah, if you are a, a decent darter and think Colin, that you, require you could mix it at Modus, just head to the ADC website, Amateur Dart Circuit, and you could be on that stage. 86. I was about to say doing things like that, but that wouldn't be what you want to do. That was not the trick. He was looking to pull out of the hat. 55. Colin, you require 15. Doubles wise this week, Osborne's been excellent. How was he on double four? Game shot on a second no leg. trouble Colin Osborne. for the man who is 35% on doubles for the week. Like I said, his numbers Third leg were so much better first. than Thornton and Smith. In fact, his average was six points better than both of them. That's an awful lot, and that's why he was favourite for this group. Did you notice at the end of the leg, Osborne again was reminding Owen about just waiting before he gets to the hockey. He's a pacey player, isn't he, Bowden? And it's nice of Osborne to provide a little bit of mentoring during a live match. One hundred. It won't go on forever. But I think what's really, really interesting, you and I were at the PDC Pro Tour earlier in the week, and I covered a game between Raymond van Bonneveld and Jella Klaassen. Now, we all know that Jella Klaassen loves to get to the hockey really quickly. But I noticed early in that match, because Klaassen's played a lot here last year, he took about 10 seconds to start the 100. leg. So he got into Super Series mould. It's amazing how it can change the way you do things. 
It could help a few players, actually. I often see those players who are really, really quick to the hockey. If they win a leg, celebrate a lot, and then race back to the hockey, often the next three darts are dreadful. Yeah, take a breath. 100. Just look at the right hand here of Bowden. There's a lot going on. A dart flops a bit, then there's a small hand crunch there as the middle finger gets close to the thumb. 45. If that's not you require perfect every time, that dart's going to fishtail in the air. Ninety-nine. Interesting player, that. A lot of players might have gone 25 with the last dart. He would have had a single to double shot when he comes back, which he will do after that wayward one from Bowden. 84. Colin, you require 62. I've got a really big compliment for Owen in the next leg. Let's see if Colin can take this 62. Well, there's 12 off. Are we taking 40 more? 42. Not quite. Owen, you require 60. Okay, left or right? Left, obviously. Double 10. Game shot on a third leg. Very nice Owen indeed. Bowden. I like what I see. Now, the compliment I want to pay him is based on Fourth his action leg. because Colin it reminds me of somebody. Game on. Let's watch his next three darts. Let's see if you can pick out what I think as well. It reminds me of Wayne Mardell. I thought you said you were going to pay him a compliment. 41. That's you off the Christmas card list. <laughs> we'll get a full look at that. Comparisons at the ready. Apologies, Wayne, if you're watching. He's not watching. 76. You don't know that. Yeah, I think you see it better in that camera angle there. He holds the dark quite far forward and then the dart comes back towards the right cheek and then delivers it very similarly to Wayne. What we did catch though there from that angle is that he is a walker isn't he on his last dart he goes with it and it's not a little bit it's a lot 140 just keep it on a third dart whether or not that was just a one off or whether it is a regular feature of his game and he's leaning into the dart before it's delivered, which means that the shoulder is going to be lower. If he's going to have a weak dart, it's going to be dart three. It's such a common fault. And I know it's somewhat harsh of me to say that it's a fault, but it is a fault. Getting the second treble means he doesn't have to come away, but just as Paul Nicholson predicted, dart three was the weak one. In the visit. The beautiful thing about these sessions is if you want to get some free advice. 100. There it is. Oh, and you require 100. Stay a bit more still on dart three and throw it like it's either dart one or dart two. Why would you want your third dart to be delivered any different? 97. Colin, you require 72. For 2-2 two -two then, Osborne looking at treble 16. And now another single to leave tops. 32. Oh, and you require what a 44. chance this is for Owen. Getting a player like Osborne on debut is not particularly kind. Is he taking full advantage of it? 28. Colin, you require 40. I'm not sure he's got the luxury of missing those two, you know. Double 19 now to correct that mistake. And it Two. turns out he did have that luxury. Oh, and you require 16. Because the wizard went wayward and could not salvage a situation. Double eight. For Bowden to open up daylight. Oh, oh wrong bed. Colin, you require 38. Goldilocks strikes again. Interesting player. Six. 
So far, not so good for the Wizard. 16. Well, Owen Bowden has missed five darts to break throw here already. This is a huge leg in this match. Make it six. Game but he gets there fair. in the end. Owen Bowden. And Osborne could have had this game tied at two apiece. Instead, he's 3-1 behind and facing Fifth leg. the throw, it's going to, throw to be beaten 4-1. And the game on. first set of results here are not going the way that the bookmakers would have predicted, Paul. In fact, every single outsider on course to win their 43. opening match. Extremely it, fair to say that we couldn't really have forecasted this. I did fancy Whitlock to win the first game. 96. I fancied Thornton to win the second game, and I thought Osborne would win this one comfortably. He's not over the line yet, Bowden, but he's getting very close. 180. He has been playing an awful lot of ADC stuff in the neighbouring counties over the last few months with mixed success. There's been some good performances in there. Some 90 plus averages, some high 80 stuff as well. 41. That's the reason he's here. But it's what you do on this stage that will define you in your journey going forward. Well, the second 180 of the match and indeed of the day 32. has come from Bowden. And it's helped him get into a decent position, but there hasn't been much with it. A 180 sandwich between two scores of 40 something in this sixth leg. Is that your kind of sandwich? Fifth not, leg, should I say? It's not mine. 97. Well, it's not his, but he has managed to leave a finish. And he hopes that he will wrap up the game in five legs. It's like having the ideal filling, but dreadful bread. 100. Oh, and you require one. That's a nice little pickle to put on the top, though. And in every likelihood, he is going to get six darts from 140. So 75 left. 82. Not the worst result. Colin, you require 133. 1 will come back 58 for the match and a really big win on debut at the 41. Super Series against one of the I top mean, players in this tournament. Double top. He's getting himself ready for it. 38. Not quite Colin, you require yet. 92. But that was so close. Got any tricks left, Colin? Not on this occasion. Five. He's had some decent performances this week, Colin, 20. but there have been a couple of stinkers in there as well. Yeah, this one is a bit whiffy from the wizard. Fifteen. Bowden cannot Colin, cross the line. 87. And that's how many darts he's missed for the match. Five. Double eighteen. Shot the game the continues. Leg, like I always say, when you've missed match darts, and there's potentially another two legs in the contest, there's no guarantee you'll get any first. more. Game on. We're going to learn something else about Owen now. How's his in-game resilience? 180. Well, we all knew that about Colin Osborne, that he had that in his locker. And in a game where he 55. struggled and stuttered and not really managed to find any rhythm, to kick off this leg 180 really piles of pressure on his opponent. There you can see 100. 10 ton plus scores. Make that 11 now. And four others that are better. It's not bad at all. 100. But on the doubles, 2 out of 12? That'll never be good enough. The reason why Owen has had a chance to win this match is because he's had more shots. 100. That's the simplistic way of looking at it. He has had opportunities, including those 59. five match darts in the previous leg. He doesn't look like getting any match darts in this leg. With Osborne on 1-2-1 one, one after 9. No need to bother going for the 
Treble 17. He'll just set up here. 100. Well, he was meaning to hit a single one there. He's actually hit a big 20 and left himself needing to burn a dart to find a double. 59. However, he does have Colin, time. Required 21. But you never want to have to burn this dart as he now goes for the bottom left corner. Game shot on a we now have a level Colin game. Osborne. And for the first time today, we go the distance. Do but I wonder how Owen's feeling Seven right now. It's Do you know, it's only the second first. time that 21 Game has on. been taken out this series. I don't know, I think I'm up. We just don't like blackjack, five. obviously. Do you know there's only what this one checkout that's only been taken out twice ever at the Moda Super Series? Three. Twenty nine. Well, yeah, how would you leave twenty nine? It's not like you're gonna hit treble Eight seven two. going for the bull. The two players that have done it, Stu Wilson and Danny Smith. Yeah, usually you've left it by doing something 82. rubbish with your previous visit, haven't you? But let's just call it what it is. Don't tell the players that <laughs> because they will try and leave it so they can join that exclusive club. I know what they're like. You know what? If Conan Whitehead's 100. watching this right now, he'll probably do it tonight. He'll leave 129. He'll have six darts. He'll hit a ton to leave 29 and take it out. I think one of them, player had 62 left with one dart and slipped 83. into the treble 11. That makes sense. Whatever happens in this last leg decider, Owen's going to learn an awful lot about himself. Wouldn't it be amazing if this leg ended with someone taking out 29 after this chat? I wonder how Colin can get there. He'd be hoping it's not that, but he would have to do something like he did in the previous leg to leave 21. 135. Well, he's getting there. Bowden has to think about this. Well, now he needs to find a treble. For me, that shows 34. that his counting abilities and his 105. tactics in leg are not at the elite level yet. Should have been using the 18s or the 19s at some point there. 30. He can still leave 29. <laughs> you wouldn't say anyone is really taking this by the scruff of the neck but Osborne has managed to bail himself out and maybe on course to complete that 100th win here Colin you require 75 102nd win sorry did that yesterday 18 and tops to turn it around Game shot. and, and Colin, Osborne. Colin Osborne <laughs> 4-3 success after a slow start. It was 3-1 behind in the game. Owen Bowden missed five match starts to win it 4-2. And the Wizard managed the great escape in that one. A 4-3 success for Osborne, who just breaks that trend of the favourites losing their opening matches after both Kieran Smith and Robert Thornton were beaten. And Smith is back in action next. Uh, he is going to take on Aaron Beanie, who beat Thornton as a pair play in game four after the break.
So three games down here at the Super Series in Group C. And two of the players to have won their opening encounters are going to go head-to-head -head now. Aaron Beedy, that man who is just trying to embrace his return. He takes on Kieran Smith, who got a 4-2 win against Mason Whitlock. Beanie then beat Thornton by the same scoreline. And since then, Owen Bowden was beaten by Colin Osborne, despite having a 3-1 lead and missing five match starts in that game. So Osborne, Smith and Beanie, the winners. Osborne will be back in action next as the Wizard meets the apprentice, Mason Whitlock. And then Thornton takes on Bowden in game first leg, six. It's Kieran to throw first. Game on. So what have you learned? about each of these players pulled in their first matches? I think what we learned about Mr. Beanie is... 137. ...that he doesn't look like someone who's got any discomfort and someone who's still got that same laser-like focus that we attributed to him before. 140. As for Kieran Smith, I think we're still learning about him. His level didn't necessarily go up from Group A to the start of Group C. 59. But maybe he was just a little bit more ready than Mason Whitlock to grab the first win in round one. However, if Kieran is to get through this group, I think he's going to have to find 95. at times at least 10% more than what we saw in round one. At least. It's not very often somebody 96. qualifies for a Saturday night with a weekly average in the 70s. That must improve, and it may have to improve in this game against Aaron. 96. There's himself on 170. After nine darts, it's a great place to be on a 99. finish after just three visits. Aaron, you require 170. And what would you rather have, 170 or 110 here? Well, I'd rather have the 170 now. 120. That is not bad at all. Kieran, you require 110. Kieran's still looking for his first ton plus finish of the week. It might just be about to happen. Game shot on the first leg. Asking, you Kieran shall Smith. receive. Do you want to ask me that question again? What have we learned about Kieran second Smith? Maybe to throw first. at the start of Group C, Game he's off. just feeling a bit more like the player that he can be. Where is a bit of confidence, this? Because he got a win against Robert Thornton yesterday in his third round of fixtures. So if he were to win this, he'd be looking at a, a three from five return after losing his first 12 matches this week. 85. It's not about performing all the time. It's about getting to Saturday, then playing your best there. Ask Jimmy Van Ski from last week. 45. He had a couple of dodgy games last week, but he did enough, only just, to make Saturday. Then, when it came to Saturday night just gone, he was excellent. Yeah, that's what it's all about, making finals night by hook or by crook. And if you want to make it to finals night, tickets are available. You can be here any Saturday at the Moda Super Series. All and you need to do is scan that QR code and it'll take you straight through to the ticket page, dartshop.tv. It's only a couple of quid booking fee and you can be part of what has been a really unique atmosphere, really good stuff the last few Saturdays, none more so than the one we just witnessed. I was just going to say, actually, if the lads who came on Saturday 85. night are free, please come again because the atmosphere they brought, it was electric in here. If you're unsure what to expect... After this, have a look 100. at the point of view video from Jimmy Van Ski's Saturday night experience at the Super Series. One hundred and does highlight what the atmosphere was like. You require 91. Everybody wants to be there. All the players particularly. Only half of them each week can be. 88 left. Can't recover this time. 43. Aaron, you require 39. So it should be a 7 or a 19. He was good in this department in his game against Robert Thornton. 7. Only missed two darts at Kieran, double. Aaron, you require 48. But he already has, and it's only leg two. 
16. He's a fiery Mario character, Kart isn't he? 32. He doesn't like failing on the dartboard when it comes to certain shots. Definitely someone who runs a little bit hot under the collar. Now it's double 12. Eight. Well, Kieran is getting chances Kieran maybe that he didn't 32. deserve. Well, what a dart that is. Second leg, Kieran Smith. And what a turnaround this could be for his week. Kieran Smith now two to the good against Aaron Beanie. As he Third looks to start leg, Group C Kieran with back-to-back -back wins. Game on. You're the one who said that he reminded you of Corey Cadby. He does a bit more of that gesticulation and pulls those faces. He'll remind you of Corey even more. 26. We don't mind a passionate dart player here in Portsmouth. Well, I think... That win, that first win, has helped him find that passion a little bit because it was forgivable flatness from Kieran Smith during the Group A campaign. There are two words I've never heard put together. One hundred and anything but now, though, isn't it? He really is firing. I noticed the referee was trying to give us a little bit of baritone at the end of that one eighty. That's a great job, Jack. But I think when it comes to baritone voices, Aaron Beanie's got that covered. Hmm. Did a bullseye challenge this morning and it's like he was doing it in the voice 43. of Barry White. Great guy is Aaron. If you have a chance to sit and talk to him, fascinating fella. Told me a few stories in Coventry one time and it got to the stage where somebody said, you're going to have to go inside and do your job, Nico. But I was too busy listening to this guy. Some of his stories. Working as a prison officer. My word. Yeah, you can imagine. 58. Forty-one. Fifty-eight. And you say that he's got a few stories. Apparently, he's got a bit of a party trick as well, Paul. For some reason, he likes to climb into washing machines. Fifty-nine. Is that with the drum taken out? Here, you require one hundred and thirty. And the breeze block it brings a whole new meaning to the phrase "going for a spin." Fifty-eight. I'll be hoping not to come up dry here on this hundred. One hundred. Where's he going? Yeah, I thought that actually he might like that as a guide. 60. He could just slide 78. it in off the barrel, but he could find himself 3-0 down here. And what he's got to do with that second dart is he's got to somewhat go for the 60, but under-deliver it. Double six. Game shot on the third Kieran there. Smith Kieran is Smith. starting to find something. It's still only a 79 Fourth average. Leg. I don't it's want to get carried away first. with a 3-0 lead here. I just wonder what he needs to do to find that next level of performance on this stage. The kind of stuff that we did see from Victor Tingstrom the first three days, where he averaged exactly 89 for the first three days. If you put that into perspective with Kieran, 96. he's four points behind 89 in his best performance in one match. Aaron Beanie's going to need to dig deep here. 140. Does so. In danger of being whitewashed. I've got to be honest with you, Murph. I've got no idea who's coming through this group. We don't have any sort of indication at this point. I know it's early. But someone, usually in Group C, plants their flag in the ground and says, this is going to be mine. Now, if Smith had won his first game 4-2 and this one, say, 4-1, 4-0, with averages of, say, 90, I'd say he's the person 58. to beat, maybe. I'm not quite there yet. And if he hasn't played, and I'm talking about Aaron now, if he has not played 66. a great deal of tournaments recently, 
the one thing that might find him out is how he feels game on game. We've seen many people this week struggle in their fourth and fifth rounds. If you've not been doing it a lot, that is something that could be quite evident for Beanie. 96. Kieran, you're well, Smith has a chance here to complete the job. He's already taken out some decent finishes, including 110. 148 would be bigger than anything we've seen from Smith this week. 140. Can't take it out, but does the next Aaron, best thing. 102. 51 needed. And because it's not found, Smith has a chance 55. for 4-0 to be undefeated eight. after two rounds. This will feel very good considering what he's been through this week. Game and shot. Smith succeeds. Kieran Smith. Aaron Beanie beaten. Whitewashed here at the Moda Super Series. Beanie started well, but he's now taken a tumble. And Kieran Smith has picked up a second win of the day. This is a man, remember, who only won one match in 15 in his Group A campaign, but it is unbeaten after the first couple of fixtures in Group C. Smith gets a better of Beanie. Coming up next, the Wizard takes on Whitlock. Doesn't sound right, but it's happening. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where on stage we have the Wizard and Whitlock. Mason Whitlock, son of Simon, made his debut just a short time ago. Lost out 4-2 to Kieran Smith when Colin Osborne then played his first match. Came back from 3-1 behind against Owen Bowden to win that one. And now the Wizard, formerly known as Ozzy, is looking to defeat Mason you can see in that stance, can't you, from that position. It's very, very similar. we will be drawing those comparisons. Probably a little unfair First that we it's Colin judge him by his father's standards because he's reached great, great heights in this sport. And that's going to be something that's difficult for Mason to carry throughout his career. Of course. 
It's been the same for some other people as well. You think about Aaron Monk and Colin Monk. Colin had a great career. Aaron himself has had a decent career to date, but it took him a long time to shake off just being Colin's son. I think we should judge Mason based on what he does and where he wants to go from here. He's obviously got talent, but it is a question of how he evolves with the talent and how hard he works. 43. Does Colin here have an opportunity to dish out some revenge, but to the wrong player? Because his record against Simon Whitlock is not good reading. 11 wins for Simon, two for Colin Osborne in 60. their careers. If Colin says that he's not aware of that, he's telling porky pies. He hasn't beaten Whitlock Senior since 2010. Whitlock Junior in action here and he's put himself in an okay position against the throw thanks to that 140 100 I think what Mason wants from this game is improvement averaged 71 in his first game he'd like to get his first start in a better position and just to feel like more of a threat and being on 126 after 12 in the first leg is a good sign 55. Mason, you require 126. No shot at ball. 54. He hasn't necessarily Colin, made a mistake there. It's Osborne who needs to find something sparkling. And he's not going to. You may have just witnessed Mason Whitlock. Over the shoulder of Osborne, Mason, just giving himself a little 72. pep talk there, saying, come on, knowing he was getting that opportunity. Tries to do something a little bit unorthodox, and it didn't 40. come off at all. Colin, you require 60. It was, can only assume it was double 18, double 18, but he didn't even properly go for that, did he? Game shot and he's on the punished. first leg, Colin Osborne. I hate to use one of the most famous... Two word expressions Second that Australia's leg. got. But when it comes to that 72, please explain. I was convinced that when he was looking at the top of the board that he was going to go for the treble 20. No way was I thinking he was going for 18s. 18. Well, he's been taught a little 14. bit of a lesson there. Couldn't make the necessary adjustment. I think he was going double-double and 59. then he didn't like the lie of the dart. But if he was going to do that, he would have been thinking single, single, double. Very odd. And then he went for the 14 and slipped into the the wrong segment. Didn't get a go at any double. That's the sin there, isn't it? Not getting a shot at any double. By all means, if you want to go a slightly unorthodox route... 57. Do what you feel is necessary, but if you're not getting one shot at a double in a moment like that, that is a mistake. Just one more little word about his father before uh, we completely stop putting that pressure on him. But just a little interesting historical fact that that run to the 2010 World Championship final started with a win against Colin Osborne. Yeah, very well documented win as well. It was coined as a game for the nickname. 77. They were both nicknamed the Wizard at the time and they almost said to each other in the papers as well, whoever wins the game gets the nickname. It just so happened that after that, Colin went to Aussie and the wizard was Whitlock. Thirty-nine. That wasn't even Simon's first world championship. He started in 2003. Beat Peter Manley in that championship. That was when Peter was at his height. In that 2010 first round, there was also a, 100. a match between Michael Van Gogh and Peter Wright, who at that stage were nowhere near the players that they went on to become. 
132. Colin, you require treating 54. the audience a little bit there, a little bit of showmanship. That was a little bit of Luke Humphreys, that. Remember that, the World Championship? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. But Oh, yes, he does. Colin Osborne. Osborne doubles his lead in this game with Whitlock waiting on a double, but still Third not getting a dart at one in this match. First. Very Game similar on. averages after the first couple of legs. You can see how tall Mason is. He's a big lad. You'd want him in your rook. If you like a bit of Australian rules. 96. I'm not sure he's into the footy, though. It's more of a Victorian thing. 108. A few more of those, and he might get victory. That will settle him down. 140. Colin's looking very focused in this game, isn't he? Maybe there is a little bit of small revenge on his mind. 42. But it's not often you get to play someone and their son or two generations of the same family. I'm sure Colin's played against Colin Monk and Aaron Monk. 28. Well, the big father-son story in this tournament was James Richardson against Josh Richardson, wasn't it? When they played each other in Southampton before we came here to 54. become the Super Series. And James beat Josh by hitting a nine-dart finish. Thanks, Dad. I can go one further than that. The last time Colin Osborne won a PDC title, he beat James in the final. 140. Well, he wants 97. To lead Mason Whitlock. 25. 3 0. required 97. 97. Lunchtime has passed. But round two looks like it could be full of bagels. 39. There's a character actually in a 59. movie called 40 Days and 40 Colin Nights called The Bagel Guy. And apparently he knows everything. Double top to have everything so far. 48. Not just yet. Mason, you require one. Can Whitlock finally get a, a double? Needs two trebles to do so, but he's way off the mark with that one. Just starting to lose his line a bit to the left, and that tends to be what he does. He has a little bit of upper body movement from right to left. And that's why that happens. I wonder if Colin's got a defective stem because he has looked at that dart a couple of times in this match. Not a happy Six. chappy. Mason, you require 114. became very, very difficult 42. after that first start. Colin, you require Didn't have to go four. 57. He could have gone 45 bull. If you wanted an open target, that is. Game shot on the third leg. Game Colin is very, very ball. close to being closed, though. And he's still looking at one of those stems. If you don't like it, Colin, I'm sure you've got spares up there. Fourth flag. It's Mason to throw first. Let's not forget when he started that leg with a 180 Mason Whitlock. Didn't get a go at a double, still hasn't had a dart double in this game. Have you noticed that 57. his miss has been sometimes left in this match, but predominantly just low? If he's going to make an adjustment throughout the course of this match and his next ones, 60. if he's aware that he's constantly low on target, he's got to make an adjustment. That could be a foot position, because you 59. can get slightly closer to the board if you haven't got your foot side on to the hockey. You can lean over a little bit more. You can throw it a little bit harder. You can throw it a little bit higher. 85. Make that adjustment because the last thing you want to do for the rest of the day is find that first dart low. This is better. One hundred. did something else that we... See Simon Whitlock do there as well. He stepped across after he put one dart in the treble 20. There's been 
no player better at doing that. 42. So many players, if they hit a treble 20, they're always going to just stand where they are and try and follow it. But you do see the Whitlocks employing that, and he employed it to full effect on that occasion. 96. Have you somewhat inadvertently just stumbled on the next reality show? <laughs> the Whitlocks. It'd be about animals, I think. Well, you were there recently, 44. weren't you? We saw that Mason, you interview teaser with Mason. Certainly something I'd watch. There's that miss left again. 77. But he's coming back. I'd rather watch At Home with the Whitlocks than anything to do with a Kardashian. At least it's real. 140. Mason, you require 32. Game shot on a fourth. And that will be a real Mason relief Whitlock. for Mason Whitlock, avoiding going down the same route as Aaron Beanie in the previous match. Fifth flag, it's Colin to throw Any first. idea why it was called Mason? Game on. No, I'm not sure. I get a sense that you might. I didn't ask Simon this, because I think it's a bit of a personal question. But I'm going to hazard a guess. I'm not even sure Simon's aware of this. Simon used to be a bricklayer back in Australia, right? 57. Yeah, I'm not sure where you're going, but carry on. If you go into certain parts of the UK and around the world, people who work with very old bricks and stones are called 60. what? Masons. Maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe his name better Chris Mason. 139. By the way, there is a, an interview. I know you were busy at home with the Whitlocks yourself, Paul. There is a, an interview with Simon, and that's going to be available here on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel 85. on Saturday. So do not miss that. Yeah, it was a great chat. Thoroughly enjoyed catching up with Simon. Just getting his low down of what's happened over the last 20 years, but also to... Look a little bit further forward as well. I think he's in a good place at the minute. And we wish him well in Risa tomorrow as he takes on Cameron Menzies in round number one. 66. He can get past it this time. That's a much better dart and a world-class 140. Colin, you he might just need 150. 108 to stay in the match if he gets a chance. We well, did say Osborne Basically produced a comeback himself in his first game. He was 3 1 behind against Owen Bowden. Oh, Whitlock couldn't carry on that comeback. 54. I wonder if that's a shot that's coming back into fashion. I'm seeing a lot more young people use the 18s on 108 now. Fourteen. Mason, you require fifty-four. Double ten. Forty-four. You do Colin, sense you that the end 40. is night. Game five could have its closure now. To end the first third of action here on Thursday afternoon. Game shot. Mason was convinced that that was going to be the end, and he was right. So the Wizard from Middlesbrough gets a second win of the day so far. After beating Bowden in Game 3, he doubles up against young Whitlock, and he will be in a very good position going into the middle round of today. More 70 average stuff, as we can see from that game there, but the doubles were acceptable for Osborne, he'll still want to be better than that, but all he's got to do is get the points at this stage, and on this occasion, he was good enough. Robert Thornton hasn't been good enough this week. He has admitted that, but he's up against Bowden himself next.
On we go then here at the Motor Super Series where Robert Thornton remains in the hunt for a hundred wins here on the live lounge stage. He's having a good old chat with Owen Bowden in between every single dart. That won't continue throughout the game. The only person that Robert talks to during a match is himself and he does it quite regularly. He was beaten 4-2 by Aaron Bean in his opener. He's trying to dig himself out of a bit of a rut this week, I think. I'm going to be honest and say it's probably one of the poorest performances that we've seen across a week for Robert Thornton. Is it going to be the time, Paul Nicholson, that he fails to make it through to finals night? It might be. And obviously, as darts fans, as well as darts broadcasters... First leg, it's Robert to throw first. We don't want it to be. Game on! But we've got to face facts. This week, he is not playing to the best of his ability for whatever reason... 41. Whether it's a loss of form, a little bit of an injury, just lacking in a bit of confidence at the minute. 58. But when you've got a name in this sport, when you turn it to somewhere like Portsmouth, like he did on Monday morning, 38. we expect those names to perform. And if they don't, we have to ask why. Because Robert can still play world-class darts, but at the minute, it's not happening. 42. He's not someone who's going to dwell on playing badly or playing brilliantly. He's just about trying 51. to beat one person at a time with what he's got in his arsenal. Is Robert the same player that he was nine years ago? No. Is he still a world-class player when he turns up? Absolutely. He's just like everybody else. He's getting 60. older. He's more fallible. But never question his work ethic. He's always the first person on the practice board in the morning. 140. And we know that the time that Robert Thornton usually comes alive is a time when he's been written off. He's made a career out of it. 96. So should we start writing him off? I think we already have. <laughs> yeah, that. UK Open win, he battled 99. back from really severe illness back in 2012, had really been struggling for the two years prior to that, and then suddenly beat everybody who was everybody to win that title, including Phil Taylor in the final. Robert, I remember it vividly, I was living in Preston at the time, I was just down the M6 from Robert, about three and a half hour drive, 28. one of his family members was on the phone to me saying, we're not sure if he's going to make it through the night, I was in the car, I was ready to go up there and his wife, Christine, who has been a pillar of strength in his life, said, I think he's going to be fine. Don't get in the car just yet. 57. Robert, you require Seven months later, he won the UK Open. That was it. Yeah, as a 250 to one outsider as well. 64. And if they'd have known the run he was going Robert, to have, those odds would have been even bigger. Did it by hitting tops quite a lot, like he did at the World Grand Prix just a few years later when he beat Michael Van Gogh in, in the final. Both of those players, the world number one at the time. 82. Robert, you require 40. Yeah, starting on tops and finishing on tops. Game shot just on the like first that. Leg, Robert Thornton. That's what his game is all about. Second Do you remember leg, when he won the UK Open, first. funnily enough, how game heavy on. that trophy was? I think he had to have his mantelpiece almost redone because it couldn't hold the trophy. One hundred. He actually balanced it on his head when he won it because it was that heavy. It wasn't a big trophy, was it? It was just a real lump of yeah. metal. Dartboard he's, shape, wasn't it? Uh, he's got some 96. great trophy stories as Robert. The UK Open one was really heavy. The Dutch Open trophy he won 17 years ago, I think it was. That was too big. He couldn't bring it home. 45. So he got, I think it was John Walton to drive it back. Well, come on, Paul. We've got a few new viewers recently, and they might not have 66. heard your trophy story of when you won the Players' Championship finals. You really want to hear it? Yeah, I want to hear it every day. I spent a lot of time with Robert around those 78. times. But after winning the Players' Championship finals on the 31st of January 2010... 99. I think I got back to the hotel at about one, 1 in the morning and I had to get a train fairly early the next morning from King's Cross. I ended up getting a cab 42. from the hotel to King's Cross, running for the train, 
and the trophy was in a box and it wasn't the greatest 100. of boxes so I was carrying it very very carefully but when we got to the train it just so happened that they had extra guards for us to get on the train from London to Newcastle 60. so they asked me to put my Roll trophy down and my luggage down and show them the ticket in the time oh hold on I just went full jolly there saying line, hold on Robert Thornton. but it was worth holding on wasn't it Robert because that's his biggest finish of the week the end of the story Third goes leg. like this. I put the trophy on the Game platform. Up. I put my suitcase down. While I'm showing my ticket to the guard as I try to board the train, a very unpleasant, 55. speedy, middle-aged woman with a pink suitcase ran over my trophy and it smashed into smithereens on the platform. And I will never, ever forget the noise it made. And I was devastated. Everything I'd ever worked for was in pieces on King's Cross platform. And within literally 10 seconds, one of the cleaners was sweeping up the trophy into a dustpan. I called the PDC from the train and they said, leave it with us. And within six weeks, I had a replacement. But I do have the original plinth. There we go. Happy ending in the end. We can laugh now. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Murph. <laughs> 58. It's not as nice as your Premier In-League Cup, is it? <laughs> no, the Nitin Kumar Cup. <laughs> Robert Thornton, as you said, he has got his hands on quite a few nice trophies. 99. But not the Super Series one yet. Such a surprise, isn't it, when you consider how often he's played, how well he's played, every time he's been to the final, 11 times now without success. There are people who haven't even made a Saturday before. That's his job over the next couple of afternoons. 99. Just to get to another Saturday to have another chance. Well, Sunning 140 from the Thorn in the previous leg. Now Bowden has left the self-same checkout. Oh, when you require 140. You know, there's an awful lot made in Dart's history about who's got the best 180 45. call. Do you know Robert who had the best 140 call? Freddie Williams. By a distance. 53. And that could have been Robert oh, in, in the distance 95. had he hit that tops. Oh. It's alive. The game's alive. If 38 goes. Oh! 57. He's hit his own stem. Robert, yeah, you was... require 20. Blocked and rejected, and now he's dejected. And that's a great guy for Robert Thornton. Never in doubt. 3 0. Robert Thornton. Do you know what other argument rages on? And I love Fourth talking leg. about this. Owen to throw first. Game on. Best Scottish players of all time. If you had to pick a top five Scottish players of all time, who would they be? Anderson, Wright, Wilson, Thornton, oh, hat stand by Thornton. Who would be the fifth? Have you said Wilson, Anderson, Wright, and Thornton? 84. It's a tough one, isn't it? You might have to stick Henderson in as number five. He's a World Cup winner and a World Senior Champion. 81. Les Wallace. Yeah, but he only won two titles. But then again, Hendo's only got two. But he's got other ranking titles in BDO days. 82. How about you have your say in the YouTube chat window? Because I think it'd be fascinating to get a top five Scottish players of all time. Guess what the most common question is in the YouTube chat right now? What's that? 40. Did the woman with the pink suitcase at least say sorry? Oh, no, she didn't even stop. I will find you. <laughs> And I will burn your suitcase. 40. Some things you just never forget. Some things can't be forgiven. Do you have like rage whenever you see a pink suitcase? Yes, now? I do. Pink suitcases should be banned. Oh, and you require 115. By the way, in Robert Thornton's next match, which is against Mason Whitlock, I've got a great story. 
for you about Robert, which I'm sure he won't mind me telling. Well, that's coming up in the next round of fixtures. Kieran Smith against 75. Colin Osborne, then Aaron Beanie against Bowden, then Whitlock Thornton. This time it is Bowden who wants the Thornton double. Oh, you require 40. Double 10. 34. Oh, no. Robert, you require 100. You know where he's going here. 60, 16 tops. Or 60 double 18. 41. Throws a very heavy dart, does Robert. It's oh, a 26 gram five. dart. Don't see many players throwing something no heavier than that. Well, he scored too heavily there. Robert, you require 75. Too many. And Thornton can take the opportunity to put him away. One old faithful. 35. But not there on this occasion oh, for the Thorn. Five. Great single. You can see the really funny face. He's got it this time. Has he got double two? Three. Robert, you require 40. So the Thorn for a landmark Game victory the here. Match. At Robert the Modus Thornton. Super Series, it's a 4-0 win from Robert Thornton and a win that sees him complete the century. 100 wins at the live lounge for the Scotsman as he exits the stage after that demolition job of Owen Bowden. A really important win for Robert as well. Uh, the 140, the highlight in that game, but he recovers from losing his first game and that will be significant for him. It means that Whitlock and... Bowden have lost both of their games. Beanie and Thornton have won one apiece and Osborne and Smith are unbeaten. But that will change after the break because they go head to head next. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. It's Thursday afternoon. You know what that means. We're now going into round number three in Group C. And that's what we've seen so far. Four matches have been won with the darts. Colin Osborne 
and Kieran Smith have both won against the darts, both in round one. But what we saw was domination in round two, as we saw Robert Thornton getting his first win and a rather remarkable win when it comes to something else as well. Because these are the players who have 100 or more wins at the Motor Super Series. And Robert has just joined that list with Conan Whitehead and Colin Osborne this week. Look at how many wins Scott Taylor's got. 120, but then again, he has played an awful lot here in the last 18 months, hasn't he? So we're going to have more games coming up for you right now. We've got round number three, and we're going to start with Smith and Osborne. Then we'll have Aaron Beanie taking on Owen Bowden, who has just had a game that he'd like to forget. However, as we move into round three, I'm the asset Paul Nicholson. I'd like to introduce... To the Motor Super Series, Lewis Martin. Welcome, Lewis. Thank you for introducing me, and it's a pleasure to be here at the Motor Super Series. Of course, we've got a big game here coming up between Colin Osborne Kieran and Kieran first. Smith, who's going to throw first here. He struggled this week, um, but today he'll be much happier to have gotten some wins on the board. And this could be quite the win for him today, 58. with Colin Osborne being fancied by many to get through to Saturday today. Based on what you've seen, are we looking at Osborne still as the favourite? Because he's just playing a little bit better in the key moments than the players he's up against. I think his experience is showing, isn't it? 60. He's hitting those doubles when it really counts. Um, we've, we've seen him not potentially at his best, and we're seeing quite an unfortunate drift 26. into the triple ones there to get the classic 26. Um, but surely the experience is showing here. He spent his time at the Super Series 96. and in the world of darts, as we've referred to in the past. Of course, having quite a good record, being a UK Open runner-up 2009 and a World Championship semi-finalist in 2007. It's a good one, two, five there. But yeah, I think we've got a fancy him with the experience. But someone like someone like Kieran Smith here, we've seen fire from him today. We, we've seen a... Well, everyone refers to the Corey Cabby-esque. We have to call him Corey Smith from now onwards. But he's he's showing a bit of fire. You can tell that he he's someone who wants to win. I don't think he likes losing, which is what you want to see from a professional darts player. You don't want to see them happy to lose. I mean, ugh, I'm sounding like Roy Keane here, but he... He's someone who doesn't 59. like to miss, which can be to your detriment. Um, but today we're seeing a bit of fire, and I think that's what you need in this group to get through, to be honest. I think a bit of a bit of desire and a bit of fire. We've oh, here we go. Ace fills that up with a one eighty there to leave to leave a magic tops. Kieran, you require but the one seventy here, this could be something, couldn't it? First start lets us down. However, you're gonna hit those maybe. Colin, Once or twice 40. out of a hundred, these Game shot are a little side. bit more likely. Osborne. And Osborne is looking very cool, calm, and collected. And I just wonder, Second leg, it's when Colin he was first. three one down on. to Owen Bowden in game three, you think, how is he going to recover from this? He won that game four three, ninety five, and then won four one against Whitlock. Has he been given a little bit too much time to get into gear today, you wonder, by his opponents? Well, by hitting a 180 in the tops there, that was brutal is the word I'd use. Putting any momentum from Kieran Smith out to grass. But here we go again. Is he going to fit it up? 121. Oh, one. Unfortunate. 15 years on from making that UK Open final. 58. And it was around about the summertime, and indeed just before that, where Osborne was highly regarded as one of the premier players in world darts. These players really enjoy us 59. reminiscing about memory lane. But as far as the wizard and the thorn are concerned, they're more concerned with what they're doing now as opposed to what they've done. 82. Massively. And in the last year or so, Colin has been quoted as saying, I still feel my game is as good as anybody's when I perform. And I've still got a few years left in this game. 
and he backs it up with a 180. So he's not done yet. It's what he's doing right now that would impress 95. anybody. Colin, you require 46. This is more like it. Playing in his 18th game of the week. And that's an interesting play. It doesn't work, but Kieran, you require I felt like I crossed into another dimension there. Why didn't he hit a six? Can't get the 57 for Bolt. So what does Colin do from 18? I'm not even going to speculate, actually, because I would have put good money on him going six tops. Double four. Ten. His opponent thought the leg was over, and Kieran he was wrong. 28. So, Kieran, if it was Christmas, I'd get unwrapping. Double seven. Fourteen. Can't take advantage. Can't and the fire turns eight. to ice. Can't get much closer than those double sevens, and look how frustrated he is. You can see it in his face. I mean, he's throwing at the floor. But Osborne can't hit double four. Can he hit double two? Six. Oh, it's high again. It's one of those legs. Kieran, you require 14. You just want to forget. But ultimately, you still want to have it with your name next to it. Who's going to get it? No it score. might not be Kieran. That's why people don't like double Colin, seven. Because you, you can't really be aggressive with it on darts two and three. Same goes for double one. Game but it works out for Colin. Colin Osborne. Now there's a trick up his sleeve that he didn't have to pull at any time today, really, until now. Leg. It's, Kieran it's to throw two first. nil. Game on. And he's the person at the top of the table who is starting to look down on everybody else. He might even have six points after three matches. 140. But Kieran Smith will want to say something in opposition to that. It kicks off with a 140, which is only going to help his case. I can see determination in his eyes. I don't know if you see it too. Um, but he he certainly is giving everything this leg. And a 140 following that up by a 100 there. 100. What I do like is that he's staring through the board. I've always been fascinated by how much a player blinks with all three darts. There are some that don't blink at all. If you look at the eyes of Smith, through all three darts there, he did not blink once. Richard Veenstra of the Netherlands on the PDC Pro Tour is an Olympian at not blinking. But there are other players who, Kieran, you require through practice, blink once or twice before each throw. It does depend on speed as well, of course. 58. An ice cold stare from Kieran Smith. There's one here quite far back in this leg, so Smith has got time. Kieran, you Can he take out this 78. 78 to get a leg on the board and get back into this game? Double 12. Game shot on the third leg. He'll Kieran be relieved Smith. to hit that one. I know he had time, but you never want to miss those darts in those situations, do you? Paul? Not at all. Four flags, especially when he'd missed first. seven Game darts off. at double before that hit. Now he's starting to put things right. It's not quite the stage of the match where you would put Kieran in the bracket of leaving himself too much to do. But against Osborne here this week, it hasn't really gone to plan. Because he has lost all three matches that they've played. And at no time has he taken 16. Colin to a last leg decider. 4 1 twice on Monday and Wednesday. It was Tuesday where he got his most legs when he lost 4 2. But he'll be wrestling against those experiences when he's playing Colin here today. It's something you just can't forget. And it's a real test of a character, I think. 
all too how high. you use that. Do you use that as motivation or do you, does that bring a bit of doubt, a bit of fear into you coming into these games? I mean, from, from the looks of it so far, I've been quite 84. impressed by Kieran in this game. Uh, he seems to be determined rather than dejected, which is, I think, a vital way to respond yeah, to a tough week. Weirdly, he's got the better average in this game by 45. about eight points. But I guess this loops back to what we were saying a bit earlier about Colin and his experience. And that's what gets you over 92. the line in these games. He hits the darts when it really matters. It's not all about the averages. Ninety-nine. It's not a bad leave. Kieran, you require 86. However, Kieran's in a better position. And this is for a break of throw. Bullseye. 61. Colin, you require one. The standard dark player face twist when you miss the ball by about half a centimetre. He does not like missing, does he? <laughs> Here we are on the 112. We've got 92 left. Wait, that's 72. 61. Just misses. The Here and you require 25. There. Now, how are you going to get this 25, Kieran? Nine. That's not how, and you're just handing you this chance to Osborne on a plate. Now, it's got to be 11 tops. Okay, how often can you be wrong? That's twice I've been wrong in this game. But there's no way he wanted treble 11 there. Double nine. That is Eight one heck of a dart player, from Osborne. Osborne. Look at the smile on his face. That may just be the weirdest 51 check out he's taken Fifth in living memory. Kieran to throw first. Game That's on. quality. He'll be wondering at the minute just how he hit that double nine because of the way his darts sit in the board, that was not an easy 60. shot at all. Now I'm starting to think that when he had 46, he was going for a six and he just missed it. However, he is 3-1 up. 99. And he's extremely close to having six points from a possible six in our first three rounds here on Thursday afternoon. 180. But he's not there yet. They're still fighting, Kieran, and you can see it. In every dart he throws, it's with authority. 60. Strong visit there. And he follows up with another treble. Oh, unfortunate on the fives. Disgust at that five. Nice. It's not often you like hitting a five, that's for sure. Especially when you're only halfway through a leg. Well, like I always say, at one point of a leg, 59. predominantly... You have to get a small number at some point, unless you're perfect. Now, this number, I like 19. 19s. Colin won't go this route. But if you get seven 19s, you leave 150, which then requires six 19s for double 18. It means that you can focus your target on one treble for two visits. However, you could just do that. Kieran, you require Nothing wrong with his one eighties in this game. He's got three. Seventy nine left. Nineteens or thirteens are good. That's better than good, game though. On a fifth leg. Stays stick. in the match with that one. He had Osborne bearing down on him, and there's just a little bit more bounce in that step it's today, to isn't there? First. Compared to the first three game days. On. There's the fight, but this is a key leg here with Colin throwing first. He'll want to stamp out the momentum. 85. Honestly, I would categorize today a bit like Ava's career. He just can't get out of the 70s and 80s. 60. 59. Someone's going to have to put in a performance at some point. 
You just don't know who it's going to come from. 140. Osborne's best performance this week came yesterday. 96.53. So it is there. It's just a question of maybe 60. when he finds it. It might just come against someone like Thornton as well. Sometimes it's better the 45. devil you know than the devil you don't. I always preferred playing people I knew instead of people I didn't because I knew exactly what was coming back at me. 135. One of the best things about the Motor Super Series, though, is that we are constantly fed 100. players that we don't know, but we want to know more about by the end of the week. And I guess the big question is, what have we learned about Kieran Smith this week? 96. Struggled in the Colin, first kind of half of this week, but, but today showing showing some some fight. And Colin Osborne here. Oh, wow. and he hits a double 16. That is something else. He's had a couple of 120 finishes this week, but that is so much harder than a 120. He hasn't played his best in that game. But he has brought his average into the 80s in the end, and he is Mr. Perfect after three rounds of play. He sets the benchmark of getting three wins from three. It's just a question of whether he'll be caught by the end of the day now because the person who was closest to him when he went into that match was his opponent. So he's fended him off, and now we take a short break. And when we come back, it's going to be Beanie and Bowden in a battle of the bees. Thank you for staying with us. We're still here in Portsmouth at the Live Lounge on London Road. And we have reached the middle point of the day in Group C, for that matter, as Beanie will take on Bowden. And they're both licking their wounds from the previous round. Beanie lost 4-0 to Kieran Smith. And then Bowden was on the end of a 4-0 drubbing from Thornton. So somebody 
is going to feel a little bit better after this one, but it's a question of who that could possibly be. Beanie has an incredible record of names that he's beaten over first the years. Flag. It's Aaron to throw first. Going Price, Rob Cross, Van Barneveld, Joe Cullen, Jamie Hughes, many more. But will he have to bow down to the Bowden? Let us see. 85. I remember when he got his first win in PDC Darts. It was such a hipster style following on social media when they were wondering where is he going to get his first win and if my memory serves me right I think it was Scott Waits imagine your first win in PDC Darts being against a former two time champion of the world albeit not 60. in that end of the sport but Scott's never been easy to beat well these days both of them have quite the beard um, but 70. Beanie, being of course a prison officer, he said before that his finishing is as good as anyone, saying, I don't know if it's got something to do with my day job in the prison, but I'm very calm in them situations. 140. I've spoken with many first responders who have been good at darts. Steve Coote from Bolton, 49. former England international and event winner on the BDO circuit a few years ago now. Alan Souter from Scotland. My old pal Tony Burtwistle back in Melbourne. Worked for the 100. Melbourne Fire Brigade back. And still does actually to this day. But one thing they all have in common is that when you've got a pressure job like that, playing Never. darts on a stage, Aaron, you require it's not really that much pressure when you compare it to what they do day to day. Imagine being surrounded by convicts and having to manage that 40. compared to throwing a bit of metal at a mat, as Sid Waddell would say. Yeah, I think Aaron's got the right mindset. Yeah, and you don't get much more pressure than a Q school campaign. And that's, of course, where he burst onto the scene, onto 57. getting a tour card. Aaron, you require and here 76. he is, back competing after a little while on this 76 here. He'll want to sweep this up. Let's see how good these doubles are. But for some reason, Owen Bowden in the background couldn't watch. Was that because he didn't want to watch or maybe he had something in his eye? Maybe we'll never know. But at the minute, after an encouraging start against Colin Osborne where he was in a winning position, 84. it seems to have gone wrong Aaron, since then. 20. You just hope for his sake... Game shot on a that first things leg. may improve, Aaron but Beanie. Beanie gets his first leg since round one. And there's just a sign of how respectful this guy it's can be. He will stand there and wait as long as you need. And he will not lose Game a second's patience at any point. Or does it show that he's in control, controlling the pace of the game? Of course, this is... A slight clash of styles, perhaps, that Bowden seems to be quite a rhythm player who plays fast, whereas Beanie is more precise and methodical, perhaps, and that's why it leans to that double hitting. 60. I don't know, Paul, if you have any words on this, but these cl this clash of styles, who does it fancy? Does it fancy the rhythm player or the more methodical player like Beanie? I think it's about the slower 60. of the two and how they adapt to the pace of the game because it's easy to be drawn into a faster match whereas if you're someone like Owen 60. Bowden if you want to get on with it you will have the vehicle to do so it's it's very much personal preference 76. I was having this chat with Chris Murphy earlier in the week I was always someone who didn't mind playing a slower player Give me a Mickey Mansell or a Mensa Sulevich, and I was never, ever adverse to that because 16. I liked having extra thinking time. But if I was up against Klassen or Ricky Evans, I'd have to stop myself from getting drawn into that quicker match. So maybe the onus here is on Beanie just to stay patient. Well, the trick is using your pace as an asset, as you will surely know. 
I'm what just looking at the facial expressions of Bowden in the background. He's cutting a very frustrated figure at the minute. 68. And shots like that are not going to extinguish that. He's still doing it in the background. I don't know whether this is more to do with Owen or my liking for trying to read people. And that's something that dart players love to do. 44. I think he's someone who just wants to get on with it. 121. That'll do. Almost gets a shot at double 18. 50. Yeah, I'm lucky on that I mean, last dart. It's a bit harder for him. So 128 here for for Bowden. Takes his time. Great first dart. Changed his mind. Don't well, know. I have no 88. idea why he changed his mind. Because with that dart 71. in the 54, surely a bed follow was the best possible option. However, Get that was the best leg. option for that Aaron. That's a break of throw. But if I may go back to the previous shot, if you've hit a 54 Third on a 128 effort first, and you've got on. the top of the bed, why? I mean, even someone like myself who despises double 10 like Sunderland, I would still go for 54 and double 10 because it's a better chance of leaving a shot. For sure, and he seems to disrupt his rhythm there. 97. And that, that doesn't make it easy for him to follow. I mean, he seems to be, as I say, a rhythm player. So stopping and disrupting that pace, as we saw, kind of led to a wayward dart. 60. I think this game was always going to be quite tricky to call after what they went through in round two. 137. But you've used that word experience already, Lewis. Of the two, you'd have to put Aaron in the experienced chair. The man who has been there, seen it done, but hasn't quite done it yet. I'd like to give Aaron a huge compliment, in fact. Because do you remember in 1995 54. when Peter Wright broke through and made the lakeside? People didn't think he'd amount to anything. But wait until he was in his mid-40s and then... Hello, 100. something happened. Who's to say that Aaron Beanie, after everything he's been through the last four years, doesn't find 57. another level in the next four years? Well, you've got to take your hat off to him, don't you? I'm sorry, listeners back home for that one. <laughs> 58. And, and you are watching the Modus Super Series here live in Portsmouth. My name is Lewis Martin. It's a delight for me to be joining you this afternoon as we watch some hard-hitting darting action. 45. Aaron, you require 150. Owen leaves himself a triple one, a 1-1-1 one, one, one finish. Beanie here, not able to finish. 58. He's still rubbing his eyes. Owen, you require He's all in the background. I just wonder if he's suffering under the lights. It's something that just won't change. 61. Now, Aaron, you require one. Beanie has been very effective on the outer ring so far. Double top again. 80. Very nearly 3 0. Owen, you require 50. Oh. Really? <laughs> really? Is that the right time to do that? 42. I'm not a fan of that. Aaron, I think you if you're 20. struggling to get legs, do things textbook instead of get the flare way. And he's leg. paid the penalty for that. He only got one dart at the outer ring. I think there's a lot of players, and I'd love to get Four your flag. take on it's this, Lewis, because we've on. seen players like Nico Bloom in previous months here, especially towards the end of last year. We've seen Littler do his tricks last year. 98. Everybody wants a little video for themselves but call me a traditionalist this is about getting points first and foremost there's a time to 100. be someone going for bull with three darts you've got to do things textbook first then you've got to find the fireworks later well let me shift the scene on this one 
Maybe it's what he needs to get going Check again. 85. He's got to go for something quite dramatic and he hits that. Imagine the confidence you would feel going off a straight ball. And maybe that's what he needs to go on and win this game as he is quite you know, far behind here. Maybe he needs a moment of magic just to get himself and his head in the game. I don't mind it. I love seeing a bit of it. We see plenty 42. of exhibition darts. Uh, university darts will be familiar with exhibition darts and we've seen it there. But as I say, he's he's behind in this game and maybe he just needs something special to boot himself back into it. And that's what that might have 85. been. What I will say is that we're seeing that an awful lot more these days. We're here to have fun and we're having fun on the South Coast 53. here at Portsmouth at the Motor Super Series. That's the right thing to do. One, two, seven, one. Now we'll go 25 and bull. 95. At least you should have, Aaron. You see, if he gets six more points, which is 25, you leave 170. 81. I think he's figured it out. These are the kind of things you need to know if you're going to succeed at this level and the next. If you look at some of the people who have succeeded here 14. and beyond, they're the oh, kind of mistakes that they don't make. If you're going to use this as a learning ground, do the right things at the right times. Aaron, you require 136. The eternal words of MVG. Another one of those. Very, very close. He was hopeful. 96. Now he's hopeful oh, that he comes back 55. for tops. Really? <laughs> magic, oh, magic darts. You've got to love it. You've got to love it. Dorset's very own residing data. <laughs> Are you slightly biased, Lewis? Very biased to Dorset. A shout out to all of those from Dorset. And, of course, the Belden there hitting what is a magical showcase 100. of darts. And as I said, is that what he needs to kick on in this game and win? Because he needs something. He is does. that it, the asset? He needs more 43. in the approach play, the scoring and the doubling. Because it stands at the minute, he's not averaging 70. And he's constantly in the background rubbing his eyes. 45. Well, I've been rubbing my eyes because I can't believe he went for ball, <laughs> but he hit it and it worked. So let's see what that has for the rest of this game. 54. It's like we always say, if you hit it, you look like a genius. If you miss it, you look like something else. 140. My favorite Aaron Beanie story is something I actually can't tell anybody, which is a bit of a shame. He told me a story outside 80. a venue once and he said to me actually if you don't mind don't tell anybody that but it it's was between one you of, and I it was one of those stories that I will remember forever because it involves 100 one of my favourite people in history and he got to meet them 95 Aaron you require 100. he would be a fascinating interview if we were able to grab him for 20 minutes but all he's trying to grab at the minute is double top for a win and he locks Shot this and game up 4-1 to Aaron Beanie a really great display again on the doubles the doubles proving to be Aaron Beanie's strength his highest checkout in that game uh, 1-1-6 and there we are with a 78.67 average to Owen's 69 average Good on the doubles. Don't give Owen many chances on the doubles there, but of course getting that high checkout and some decent 140 plus scores. A 4-1 win. He'll be happy with that coming back into professional tournaments. And next up, we will have Mason Whitlock playing the fawn, Robert Thornton.
Thanks for staying with us. We're still here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And this, when it comes to surnames, is a heavyweight contest. It's Whitlock against Thornton. And if you're tuning in for the Wizard against the Thorn, wrong place, I'm afraid. However, if you're really keen to see how Mason gets on against the Thorn, you've come to the right place. Roberts has had a somewhat mixed week so far and a mixed day. One win, one loss. If he first turns leg, that into two Mason wins and one loss, he will make sure that Mason Whitlock is towards the bottom of the table after three rounds of play. What do you think, Lewis, has Mason got to do to change his fortunes here today? Well, if you see them standing side to side, 81. I think that gives you the answer. I think Mason needs to reach new heights to win this game. I thought in his first game, he looked slightly nervous. I think that's fair to say. 96. I saw him briefly backstage. He seemed to want some time to himself to get everything together. This, of course, is a big moment for him and for the entire family. There's a lot of pressure. I mean, we've been speaking about it on comms all day today. He is a young gentleman here who is showing his darts 82. to the world. There's a lot of pressure, but yes, I think he needs to be more consistent. I think one thing you were saying in the first game was that his grouping was was really good. I think he needs to keep that up. Because when he was missing before, he wasn't missing by much. 42. And I think the pace will suit him fairly well. He seems like a fairly fast player from what we've seen so far. But yeah, I don't 44. think he waits too long to get to the hockey. In fact, I think he's just a little bit quicker than his dad. Overall. Well, he'll be lobbing them over the head 65. of the fawn. But will Robert the fawn be a fawn in his side today? Not like that one's been used before. <laughs> I think that's where it comes from. Mason, He's been in a thorn in many people's sides over the years. Oh, it's a staple of the Whitlock family. Can he hit the ball? He really wanted to hit that. Uh, Robert, you require 58. You can tell by the little smell he's got in his face that he really wanted it. Here's the leg beyond him, though. Not yet. So pick your double, Mason. Mason. You 47. Can it be vintage Whitlock? Can he grab a leg against Thornton? And yes, we are in 20. 15. 24. Robert, you require 20. This is the 20. This is next to 24. 10. Mason, you require 32. Hasn't been great on the doubles today Mason so far, leg, Robert Thornton. Mason Whitlock. And Mason took full advantage of those misses of which second leg it's Robert to throw first there were five game on one 22 one of Simon's heroes and one of mine too Russell Stewart once played in that tournament for the very first time turned up to Alice Springs Airport a guy picked him up in a truck and he said 59 what are the eight canisters in the in the back for and he said oh mate we're not going to get there without that fuel that was the fuel and the fact that there were no gas 84. stations between Alice Springs and Tennant Creek tells you everything you need to know. It was a bit of a schlep. It's primetime entertainment here with those accents on show. I won't bore anybody else with my Scottish. <laughs> and for any pets at home that have been disturbed by such noises, 84. we can only apologise including all of the pets in the Whitlock household, of which there are plenty. There's a snake, there's Robert, dogs, guinea pigs, chickens. 43. Not good from Robert there, unfortunately. Mason, and Mason's got 18. a chance of 2 nil here. Oh, okay. Well, oh. double 10. That'll Son work. Second leg, Mason Whitlock. This kid is magic. Third leg, it's Mason. Mason to throw Whitlock. First. 
I Game think on. we're seeing Mason can't stop winning legs. And he is saying to Fulton on the wizard theme, 40. you shall not dart. It's 2-0 to Mason Whitlock. And he's showing a bit of something today. Double tops, double tops. 28. To go 2-0 up on a two-time World Seniors Championship, Robert Thornton. Well, what's he got to lose? I know I wasn't a big fan of five bull in the previous match, but people going two double top shots on 80 is something that has been done by the likes of Gary Anderson, Richard North, plenty of other people 40. on the tour. They believe in it, so who am I to scoff at that? But I do want to take you back a little bit. 44. For somewhat selfish reasons. The 9th of August, 2009, was one of the best days of my life. 60. A day that I beat Robert Thornton to, beat, to win the Australian Open at Coogee Bay. However, it's not about that. It's about what happened in the semi-finals. When Robert Thornton was playing Simon Whitlock, 44. it's a game that 99.999999% of the planet haven't seen. But 100 Robert would attest to the fact he wishes they could. Thornton won at 6-1 in the semi-final. And if you could only see the finishes he took out. 140. Ask Simon. Robert hit everything. And I mean everything. 59. Last time we spoke about it, Robert and I, we think he took four checks of over 150 in that match. Outrageous darts. 54. Not a surprise. It's Robert what he has done for a very long time. He needs something outrageous here. Two double tops. See, in that spot, it makes a lot 94. of sense. Mason, you require 56. For 3 nil. One tops. 46. What a chance Robert, you missed. require 40. Game shot on the third leg. The all reliable Thornton. on tops. As the asset said earlier. Is there anyone more Fourth reliable leg. on it's tops? Robert to throw first. In modern day darts, possibly, but at their peak, I think not. Wolfie? Possibly. James Wade? Yeah, he's definitely 26. up there, top three of all time. But on those double tens, he is equally brutal. Do you know what? If and when, because we're all mortal, Robert Thornton's not with us anymore. It's 58. a long, long way away, but his epitaph will write, Robert Thornton, loving husband, loving father, couldn't leave him on tops. 180! And after the conversation we've had about Scottish dart players today, 140. he's unquestionably at number three in the all-time list of Scottish players. And that tells you an awful lot about what Peter Wright and Gary Anderson have done. 58. There are people who think he's greater than Jockey Wilson because of what he's done in modern-day darts, but maybe that one will rage on. 95. Because his career's not over yet. He might even have more notches on his belt to find... But then again, I know there are plenty of people who think Jockey's at number three. 134. Well, the fawn has those two stars on his lapel. Yeah, Scottish players never won more than two world titles. 58. No matter what the Probably level. require 103. BDO, WDF, PDC, seniors. There are three players with two. Anderson, Wright and Thornton. And Mason, Wilson. You require 150. Why do I keep forgetting about Jockey Wilson? One of those days. I'm surprised he didn't go three bulls. 132. Robert, you require 56. Double 16. You very 24. rarely see him down there in a shot like that, but it Mason, was because he missed 18. his single. This is a chance to go one away, Game and he pins it. Mason Whitlock. It's 3-1 to Mason Whitlock. Well, there you go. There's a smile there. He's and the signature. Flag. It's Mason to throw first. Throwing of the fingers. He is enjoying this. As far as the standard of the game is concerned, 
92. It's not that different from both players and what we've seen today. But if you've got your binoculars out... 100. And you're trying to see some micro signs of why he's genetically connected to Simon, hitting double nine with one dart might be another clue as 100. to him following in the footsteps of the wizard because Simon likes double nine and I can count on one hand how many right-handers like double nine. 81. Well, honey, wake up. The new Whitlock just dropped. He's been playing on a development tour since 2021. In his first 22 tournaments, 39. he made it to the last 64 twice, but in his previous nine, he has made it to the last 32 three times. He's now 44th in the development tour order of merit. So there's improvement 68. that we're seeing from him. And we've seen it today, arguably. I think he's been pretty brutal on the doubles, especially in this game. Just hasn't 68. had enough opportunities so far. Four attempts in both of his first and second matches. Two hits followed by one hit. 28. Both equations are very acceptable. But based on those ratios, he probably needs something in the region of 10 or 11 shots to get a win. If he does 96. get another dart or a double, which is looking very likely here, that will be his 10th attempt. His first opportunity of... A premier win Mason, here at the Motor Super Series could well be against Robert Thornton. Well, 95 left for two. And he's got a shot for the match. And that is the match the to match. Mason, Whitlock. Mason Whitlock. He's done really well there. He may not have played his A-grade stuff, but on the outer ring, he was excellent. 40% for the man who shows that he was just a little bit nervous there. But the more he's on the stage, the more he will calm down and the more he will enjoy it. I'm sure The Apprentice has just made us see some of his work. So 40% on the doubles, like I said. Robert still not at the races this week. And Mason took full advantage of that, winning it by four legs to one. Bringing us to the end of round three. When we come back, round four will begin.
Welcome back. And just before we start this 10th match of the day between Aaron Beanie and Colin Osborne, who is having a very, very good day today, let's have a look and see what we've already seen. So Mason Whitlock started off against Kieran Smith and on his debut match, he did suffer defeat. However, in the match we've just seen, he's got his first win against Robert Thornton. So let's see, have a little bit, or how, a little bit of this action has transpired into the table. Osborne is top. He is the only undefeated player so far. Kieran Smith has done a lot better at the start of Group C than he did at the start of Group A. But Robert Thornton, Mason Whitlock on two points are trying to catch the top three at this point. And it's only Owen Bowden at the bottom on zero who has got more to do than anybody else. So without further ado, round number four will start now. A chance for Osborne to get to eight points. And for his opponent, Aaron Beanie, a chance to equalise Osborne on six, Chris Murphy. Yeah, absolutely. I get the sense that Colin Osborne could disappear if he wins this game into the distance. And then you've got five players fighting it out for the remaining spot at finals night from Group C. Beanie can stop that happening and join Osborne as... First leg, it's Colin to throw first. On three wins out of four, but a win for the Wizard here, and he's starting to look like the standout candidate to top this group. Like we said earlier, Murph, it's, it's a career that has spanned the thick end of 20 years. When you've been playing a long time and you go through a throw rebuild, a mindset rebuild. 180. You're always looking to see what kind of player you can be next and what kind of tournaments are missing. 85. As far as this place is concerned, what's missing? He's won a week. He's won groups. He's got records. 55. We were talking about this last week with Pilgrim. They both have something in common when it comes to their want list. 100. They want a series, but they're very hard to come by. That's one of the reasons why Scott Taylor's at the top of the win list in the history of the Motor Super Series, because he's played 29. an awful lot of games, and his win percentage is very, very high. And he is a series champion. Who knows? 121. Back into next month. We could be taking some very valuable footage of Colin Osborne lifting that series trophy and being the Series 7 champion. Yeah, been close before. 81. And Colin, closing in on 55. the opening leg here on what's been a very fruitful day for the Wizards so far. Oh, come on. He had to go five bull. <laughs> Sensible stuff from the Wizards. 35. But he hasn't yet won this leg, and Beanie will get a look at the one five six. Thankfully, there's only one way you can get this. 59. Colin, you required 20. I'd like to say the same about 20. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody splits that at some point today. 10. As people... Decide to burn the textbook and go their own way. We have two players here who are going to go via the textbook. Double top. 57. The right thing to do in that moment. Colin, you require 10. And Colin knows exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, stop faffing about. Six missed starts at double. Make that seven. No score. And eight. And he should have had Aaron this leg one a long, 40. long time ago. Game so far today, leg, Aaron, Aaron Beanie, Beanie has been so good on the doubles. Four out of six when he second won his first leg. game. Aaron to throw first. Four out of six when he won his Game second on. game. And in the middle of that, yes, he did get five darts at a double in round two and didn't hit one. But predominantly today, he's been so, so good at it. I may have just thought of a new game for our social media channel, by the way. You know when you've got three dots at double five, like Colin had in the previous leg? We have to freeze 64. frame it and play spot the ball. 
So spot the hit. Which portion of the double is he going to hit? Take no admin. Here's the trick. He might not hit it at all. 57. Which he didn't. Did you ever used to play a spot the ball? Um, No, in short. 60. Never got it right. It was a hard game to play. Long time watching Sheffield Wednesday. It was never in the net anywhere. I knew that much. <laughs> 44. I didn't want to bring football up, actually. Maybe best not to bring up Middlesbrough at the minute. I follow up quite a few people on social media who are Middlesbrough fans, and all they ever do is complain. I hope you guys at home aren't complaining about the level of tenacity we've seen from some of these players today. And that's what you're going to need to get through Group C. We saw that last week. Maybe the best Group C we've ever had. 45. At this stage of Group C last week, we had no idea what was going to happen. In fact, at this stage, on the Friday, we had no idea what was going to happen either. 93. Well, Beanie having nicked the opening leg has now left 110. To double his lead in this match. Big game. Remember the context 90. of the table that Osborne Aaron is looking to carry on. A perfect start he's had today. I wonder if Colin was on something smaller than 105. 98. Whether he Aaron might have looked at top bull. Maybe don't hit that, because when Luke Littler went for it, somebody wasn't happy about it. 43. Double six Aaron, to extend the advantage to two. Now it's his no turn score. to start missing. Come on, Colin. Require 62. Go for 42, double 10. And hit the treble 11. Tops in the end. That's what he wanted. That's what he 22. gets. But he can't hit it. Aaron, you require 12. And Colin Osborne is missing. Dart after dart, double in this game. That's now nine at the outer ring. Without success. Okay, and Beanie gets success. 2-0. That's a bit of a strange leg, isn't it? But how many times Third can we possibly say that in one day? Game on. Don't forget that we do have darts from 10 o'clock tonight as well. An evening session with Conan Whitehead. Sign me up. Now that's my kind of Thursday night. That's what you get with Conan, isn't it? Just the kind of matches that you don't want to take your eyes off. 58. Yeah, Colin Whitehead playing Pete Burgoyne in his opening match tonight. David Wazuski will take on Kerner Groeneveld and then Bradley Brooks in a group that would uh, get you a lot of points on Scrabble. 47. Yeah, I wonder which dart player would give you the most points on Scrabble. I know that Christoph in Polish gives you 37. It's got two Zs in it. 121. I always like it when Pete Burgoyne comes by as well because his name sounds like a sound effect. Yeah, you'll be doing that tonight, won't 99. you? Absolutely. You try and stop me. Wouldn't want to go toe to toe with them in a crease beating contest, though. Yeah, nicknamed the Feast. One hundred and forty. Colin Osborne made a decision there to avoid the bull and back himself with a treble knowing that Aaron Beanie would need a couple of trebles himself to leave a, a finish. We had this conversation actually during the week, didn't we, that a lot of players are starting to do that kind of thing now when Colin, you require maybe the more sensible shot to leave a bigger finish is the ball, but they think well, it's unlikely that they will 
leave a finish themselves, so I'm just going to carry on at the treble 20. He's not going to this time. 92. And the reason he didn't go treble 20 second time, because if he hits it, then goes for double six and splits it, he's stuck on six. What he did just now was absolutely the right thing to do. Colin, you want to leave yourself, 40. at worst, on a primary double instead of something pesky like threes. Game shot on the third Very leg. well Colin thought out by Colin. Well, 2-1 down, he will feel like he should be 3-0 up, to be honest here, at Colin Osborne, Fourth but at least it's, it's not 3-0 to his opponent. Game on. Be pretty one-sided affairs for the most part today. The first three games were close, 4-2, 4-2, 4-3, but since then, 4-0, 4-1, 4-0. Osborne did win 4-2 against Kieran Smith, and the last two games have been 4-1. And in fact, in the only match that went to a decider, 95. the the player that Osborne beat in his opener, Owen Bowden, did lead that match 3-1. He did. Had five match starts, so it could have easily been another 4-1 scoreline. Correct. 101. I think we're learning a fair bit about Owen as the day goes on. But what we learn about Colin 137. at this point in his career is that maybe he's not playing the best darts he's ever thrown. But he continues to have passion and drive. And that takes you an awfully long way. Might have to use the 19s at some point here. Doesn't have to. 108. Brilliant maximum by Colin Osborne, levelling the tally of 180s in this game, as he will look to level the game when he comes back. 41. Colin, you require 89. Level it he can. If he finds 32. Game shot on the fourth What leg. a wonderful five-dart blitz that was from the wizard. 269 and 5. And Fifth if you're having a practice while watching first. this, try Game and on. do that if you can. He may not be playing the best darts of his life right now, but maybe right there, one of the best shots he's hit this year. 100. Another game that he's... trying to turn around and maybe doing so successfully. The game back on throw, and 81. he's got the advantage of the throw in this match. And Colin's playing a, a lot of darts at the minute. Not just here at the Super Series, in every series, because he's a mainstay. 40. He's playing Challenge to a darts. No doubt he's playing some ADC stuff as well. And his best run in the Challenge Tour this year is the last 16. Lost out to Ron Mullenkamp in that 60. last 16. But if you're going to make a big impression on that tour, you've really got to be making quarterfinals and better quite often. Look at Aidan Kirk recently. Got his first challenge to a win this season and he was on the Pro Tour at the start of the, the week. And he gave Gary Anderson one almighty scare. If you can play well at this level and 45. gain confidence, you can take it to other places and be a real threat. 't letting the cat out of the bag is is that someone with the, that we're going to get in this series Aiden Kirk well I mean, it's difficult to tell you without letting the cat out of the bag to be honest Paul but hey, um, it looks a bit more like Andrew Gilding these uh -huh. days shall I reveal shan't I reveal you just want to leave the cat in the bag do you 54 go on then yeah he's playing Colin, later in the series yes that's what we like we'll drip feed you I'm going to go so far as to say 85. when he plays, I think he'll win the week. I was mightily impressed with him when I saw him earlier in the week. I think he was magic. I know who else is in the week. I'm not going to reveal that, but I think um, you might revise your opinion if you All right, fair enough. saw four or five of the names that were in that week, not just one or two. All right, we'll cross that bridge and we'll come to it then. Double top. 36. Oh, Colin. 
Aaron, you require we will be revealing next week's players on tonight's show, so do stay tuned for that at 10pm. Ninety-nine. Colin, you require twenty. Game shot on a fifth Osborne has turned Colin this Osborne. one around. Here we have recently revealed it. A couple of players that are going to be joining us soon. One of them, Bo Greaves, set for Sick her Motor Super Series first. debut. That's Game coming very soon indeed. We will reveal exactly when in due course. Sixty. We've also got the likes of Pie Face coming up, I believe, Paul. Bit of an unfortunate name, isn't it? <laughs> One hundred and forty. Yeah, charity event that's taking place featuring some social media stars and influencers and the odd decent darts player as well, including Fallon Sherrick. And you can watch the action on Sunday the twenty eighth. Of April, live here on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. It gets underway at 3 p.m. Is that the only place you can see it? I believe so, yeah. Apart from anybody up to anything dodgy. 57. So we're not going to be having that in front of fans. Can see, no, you can see it here, but the tickets are sold out, so ah. you're too late. Are you trying to tell me I can't come and watch? There is one ticket left for you, Paul. <laughs> I might pop down that day. Meet some people I've never heard of. But I'm past halfway point in my life. I'm starting to sound like my dad. 140. I think Aaron Beanie is letting this one slip. 60. Colin, you require he has not played terrible in this game, but Osborne is just operating at a different level to everybody else, including the people he came into Group C with 58. from Group A. He's looking a little frustrated as he walked back there, Colin Osborne. Hasn't left this easy. He wants to get rid of Beanie right now. Colin, you require 106. If in doubt, just get it done immediately. And treble one does not do him any favours. 33. Aaron, you require 138. He had me really bamboozled there. Double 12. 126. Colin had me in a tease with his previous shot. I think he made a miscount it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely did. He actually had a bit of look up towards the comms box as he walked back. I think he realised what he'd done and thought they'll be 53. talking about that now. Aaron, you require 12. It's all right, Colin. We're only going to bring it up if you lose the match. Well, he may lose the leg. Not because of the miscount, because of the miss. Other side, Aaron. Can't afford to be safe. Six. Excellent try. Colin, you require 20. But that might be that. Double 10. Game and eventually and Osborne match. does win Colin the match. Osborne. So he's going to go to eight points. And I think he's talking to Aaron about the miscount that he had in one of his previous turns. It was a bit of a strange situation. He was trying to figure out in his own head what he was doing. However, when you look at the statistics of an 81 average and four out of 18 on the doubles, you can tell that he didn't play his best darts, but the fact that he's got eight points in the table tells you all you need to know at this point as we reach the two-thirds point in our schedule. When we come back, Kieran Smith has got another crack and a very, very good player. This time, it's Robert Thornton's turn.
At this stage of the day, would you have had Kieran Smith on four points and Robert Thornton on two? My guess is probably not. However, that is the case. As they are about to play their fourth match of the day. Kieran, if he wins against the legendary Thornton, could put him in the window of winning more matches than he's lost for the first, first time it's this Robert week. To throw first. Game on. And with a game to spare, because he plays Owen Bowden in game 15. Thornton's got Osborne 42. in his final match. Are we at the point now already, Chris Murphy, where Robert Thornton's perfect record of qualifying for Saturdays is now under threat? I think we definitely are if he loses this game. If he wins it, of course, he's, he's level with Smith, 41. he's level with Beanie. There is a, a real chance, I think, in this group that Colin Osborne could run away and somebody could get through in second place with quite a low points hole. But if he loses, four points between himself and Kieran Smith, who's just at a 180 against the throw in the opening leg. 58. I think Thornton will be coming into tomorrow with his feet planted firmly on the trap door. Correct. Still wafting that right hand 59. around, signalling discomfort. But if there's one man you can't back against when 59. the chips are down, it's Robert. Kieran, you require 122. Doesn't need to go treble 18. A lot of players would use the bullseye there. 25 leaves 97. 42. If I was a, a teacher marking somebody's approach effort there, I'm not being critical. I'm 96. trying to be constructive. Kieran, you require I'd give 80. that a D minus. You just got to know these things a little bit better. This, I am thoroughly behind. 48. Going 16s first on 80 with an opponent north of 200. I am all for that. So we've gone from a D minus. I'll give him an A minus. 40. Kieran, you require. Well, what would you 32. give that from Robert Thornton? Moving swiftly on. Not his day, is it? Kieran Smith looking to get over those into double eight now. 16. And what's more, Robert has left himself on a bogey number. Not for long. I would go bull again here. It's such a nice ally. One hundred and twenty nine. Well, Kieran, he did the right thing, 16. but there are people today who would have gone bull with that last start. And it is in leg. with the last Kieran dart. Now, oh, I did threaten a little bit earlier a Robert Thornton story. And I'm Second not ashamed to say that I forgot which one it was. First. But I've Game remembered on. what it is. Okay, well, everyone's been waiting. Quite a few yeah. years ago, I was sharing a room with Robert. And having done it for a couple 59. of years, I got to know his intricacies and what he liked and what he didn't like. But there was one night we went to Dinslaken in Germany back in 2009. 96. He was out for the count. Sleeping soundly. And I just couldn't sleep. And I thought, well, we've got to be up at 4.30 in the morning to get our 43. taxi back to the airport, which was Dusseldorf, I believe. That's another story, because I think the taxi driver was doing about 250 kilometers an hour. 40. However, when I couldn't sleep, I decided to watch Underworld with Kate Beckinsale in German. I didn't know any of the words, but I kept watching. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 59. Robert, in his sleep, decides to start singing. And if anybody's seen Love Actually, where the kids are singing, find a little star and put it in your pocket, and never let it fade away, that's what he was singing. And then when he was finished the song, he just went back to sleep and he was silent as you can be. It was a really 56. odd moment, but it was kind of cool at the same time. See, I hope those who waited found it worth the wait. Children have been left waiting for parents at school gates, Paul, just to hear that story today. Well, there you go. 
Well, that was worth the wait from Thornton. Wasn't it just? He's kind of woken up and started singing here, hasn't he? Go on, Robert. Put it in your pocket and never let it fade away. 58. Robert, you require 127. Can you follow that maximum with a beautiful finish? Now he's just fiddling around with his darts, trying to put a flight back in. Well, Robert uses a hole-punched stem ring, and he also has a flight protector. I just wonder which one it is. Well, there we can have a good look at what he does. He's got a spare ready, a little pit stop here from the Scotsman. Where's Guido when you need him? Yeah, change it back. 30. <laughs> Easy for us to see. In all seriousness, he might have just opened the door for Kieran Smith to get back into this leg. If he can find a treble with this last dart, he'll be on some kind of finish. I know it was only 15 56. to 20 seconds, but that's all it takes Robert for a dart player to lose their rhythm seven. sometimes. There's the seven. He's not going to get the 90 more. Yeah, that was at bullseye. It's a long way off. And Kieran Smith has left to check out. 35. This would really hurt if Robert Thornton were to observe the big fish being netted. Not going to happen. Not on this occasion. 65. Robert, you require 62. 12. Not found. 22. A remarkable turn of events Kieran, after hitting a maximum. There's the five. And he's not going to get the hundred more. So Robert does have multiple darts at tops, potentially. Robert, you require 40. Game shot Doesn't need them, of course. Robert Thornton. Couldn't hit anything en route. But as soon as he got to the destination, thank you very much. Third what leg, it's Robert may Thornton well be first. a must-win match for Robert Thornton's week for this perfect record Game of on. reaching finals nights to continue. Is Kieran Smith showing signs of unnecessary annoyance 100. there? Because it really shouldn't have been in that leg at all. I think he's been showing that most of the day. At the start of his first game of the day against 100. Mason Whitlock, you can attribute that to the previous three days. But it is entirely fair to say that today has cooperated 99. better. I just hope he's one of those guys that isn't looking at the glass half empty. Because he's very much in the race for being in the top two in this group if he was to find 90. a victory here or indeed in his last match, which we have to be realistic with. He will go into his favourite. 138. That'll do very nicely. Great approach again. But the last time he had a, a somewhat perfect approach. 97. The Robert, nuts came off and so did the bolts. It's just been so sporadic from Robert Thornton. Unable to 56. not just put a few good legs together, but a few good visits. That's been his problem all week. Interesting. 108! Did you see the speed Robert, in which he threw that last dart? Still on this. Not now. And Kieran Smith in hitting 32. the 180 has left himself that awkward double. Robert Kieran, Thornton has tried to hit a double and hasn't. So two interesting decisions there. That Game one paid off. Third leg, Kieran Smith. We haven't seen double 17 hit that much in the last year and a half on this Fourth stage. Flag. It's Kieran to throw first. But two, one, four, Game and four, on. no matter how you get it, is brilliant. He's got a really interesting grip. Uses a very long dart. 59. Long stem, big flight, long barrel, long point. At which point did they become mini javelins? 46. Well, that 34 checkout was the sixth of this series. Not necessarily all double 17, but taking out 34. There's 134 with those javelin-style darts. So if we could overlay those, it would be incredible. It's about half the size that Robert Thornton's throwing. Have a 22. look at Smith when you come back. Now, Robert's always used a short stem and a big flight, whereas this guy 
just everything's long. Size of those points. 92. Well, Robert Thornton was going to turn into a long shot to make it through if he loses this game. I'm starting to think it's not going to happen. I've got to be honest. 34. How often do you see Robert on 399 after 9? It's a horrible number to start with, but... 60. When it's after three visits, it's made to look even uglier. Yeah, it's been scrappy, scrappy stuff from the Scotsman this week. Kieran Smith is looking to take advantage and he's looking to turn his week around. Maybe it all started for him yesterday when he got that win over Thornton, his first in 13 95. matches. Very fair to see. 83. That follow through of Robert is not Kieran, you require as fluid one. as it has been in the past. I just wonder what kind of discomfort he's got. Whether it's a shooting pain, some sort of pins and needles, but something is not right. Neither is that. No score. And he decides to bust it, which for me was the right play. You think to bust 61 rather than leave a double? He had five left with one dart. Would you rather be on 61 60. or double two with three? Kieran, you require with Robert 61. not in a finish, Alex 61. Interesting. What does he do this time? Well, double eighteen. Game shot on a four. And it proved to be the right Smith. thing for him because he hit what he left. So sixty-one goes, and Smith leads Thornton three-one. Clearly struggling, isn't he, Thornton? Flag. You can see him again stretching first. his arm out. Game on. Darts is not a thing that is harmless. When you've been in a darts throwing position for the best part of two decades, I defy 100. anybody to not have some sort of discomfort. That's why a lot of these modern young players are doing things to counteract 96. the darts position. The twisting of the lower back, the projection of that throwing arm, wrists, elbows, pressure on hips, knees and ankles... It's something you have to 26. take care of. It's shortened careers. It's stopped people's momentum. Yellow Klaassen was playing 85. great darts a few years ago, and then he played with injury towards the end of a Premier League campaign. By the end of that campaign, his wrist was black. 60. He should have stopped, but he couldn't in his own eyes. That's why when someone takes the somewhat difficult decision to take time out of darts to get something right, 80. I applaud them. Someone like Aaron Beanie, for instance, he knew that his shoulder wasn't right. He took time off. He's gone to get it fixed, and now he's as good as new. 140. Well, Thornton shows what he can do there, but it is too late, seemingly. 100. Kieran has a match winning opportunity now. And it's a finish we have seen today from Thornton. 99. He hit it. Kieran, and he beat Bowden 4 0 in game six. This to win the match. And it would be his third win in four today. 60. Robert, you're Now we have to say that Robert's got to work hard just to get to the double. Well, apparently not. Game shot on a Made that look easy. Robert Thornton. <laughs> he's trying to be a wizard. Yeah, I'm sure he's not sure what's going on, is Sixth he? Flag. Either. It's Kieran to throw first. Game on. One moment there is nothing, then the next. He's brilliant. Do you remember when Robert got his driving license? Just how happy he was to get his first car. One hundred and thirty. Well, it's only about two years ago, wasn't it? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, long, ago wasn't long ago. I'm not saying that he got his driver's license in the 1980s. He didn't. He waited a long time to get his driver's license. One hundred and twenty. I do believe his first journey in the car was from Glasgow to Milton Keynes. 
Honestly, he was like noddy for a couple of weeks. All he wanted oh, to do was get in his car. But it was somewhat refreshing to see somebody, not of youthful years, getting that kind of independence. 58. And not having to rely on public transport anymore. Just goes to show that not every dart player is driving a Lamborghini. He got himself a Skoda. 100. And it's the kind of car that would go through a flaming hot building, as proven by Top Gear. Because that's the kind of car he bought. 58. I do believe he's still got it. Whereas you might see dark players in fancy shoes these days and fancy cars and swanky houses. Robert's just a little bit more grounded. He likes the honest things in life. Like spending time with his family, going for a drive. 140. Kieran, you're and chucking the odd game of darts still and getting a little bit of success. Well, Kieran had a chance to do it. To do it now. 94. On 150. Check 74. 78. Robert, you require 120. 120 for the Thorn. Could he go bull bull? Well, I get the play, but when you've been struggling to hit anything 72. for the best part of four hours, trying for two bullseyes does seem like a a bit ambitious. How about one of them? 47. Not quite. And Thornton Robert, will look for one 82. to start this visit. And that's one of the worst outcomes he could have had because he needs to find a treble and can't. I'm surprised he didn't go treble 11 for tops. Kieran, you require 25. So Smith to clean up the remainder, having missed the bullseye for the match. Now he can beat Thornton for the second successive day, but he's only getting one dart at a double. That double is double four. 21. Robert, you require 40. What did we say earlier? Six I'm going to change Robert it somewhat. Thornton. It was don't leave Robert on tops. Now it's don't leave Robert on 40 points. Seven from final. If Robert leg, gets out Robert of this game with a win, game on. It's like he's had a get out of jail free card in his back pocket the whole time. Well, let's not forget the conversation we had at the start of the match when we suggested that maybe defeat here 100. would be fatal for Thornton's chances in this group. Victory, and he stood near level. With Smith and Darren Binu, who will have already played four games themselves. So effectively, joint second place and the top two go through. And you would have to fancy, after Whitlock 57. beat Thornton in game nine, that he would be the favourite to join that cabal of players on four points at the expense of Bowden in game 12. 100. Just got to stay straight. Seems to have got the weight of Dart, okay. But he's struggling with the line. He's got company. 81. However, Robert will like that one. Just keeps him behind by half a dart. Forty-one. What a chance this is for Smith. Find a bit of quality. Six starts from two, three, seven. Sixty. He needs more than six. Forty-five. And some more scruffy stuff, Thornton. He knows what he can do. He knows the one, three, three is certainly a possibility for him, but it's difficult to shake off the the consecutive bad visits. Robert, you require 133. Downstairs first. Oh, there's the three. 66. I'm not sure what he was doing with the last dart. Was it treble 18? Was it treble 20? Nobody will ever know. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's frustration. I think they're just throwing at anything out of anger sometimes. 
Game and show. Thornton and the has now reason Kieran to be Smith. angry because he's just suffered a defeat that could harm his chances beyond repair. Thornton goes down 4-3 to Kieran Smith, who after losing his first 12 matches here at the Super Series has won three out of four in Group C and is second in the table on his own, ahead of Aaron Beanie and behind Colin Osborne. Now, the bottom two will go head-to-head. -head. Mason Whitlock, who has a win against Owen Bowden, who doesn't? One more match in our fourth round of matches here in Group C on Thursday then. And Mason Whitlock has got a great chance of getting to four points after four matches played. Didn't start with a win. Didn't get a win in round two either, but he has warmed to the task very nicely. With his best performance of the day so far, he beat Robert Thornton in game number nine. And with Owen Bowden struggling on the stage throughout his first three matches, you'd have to fancy that in a battle of the bottom two, it would have to be Whitlock that starts as favourite. Hasn't changed anything throughout the course of the day. First leg, it's Owen to throw first. Game on. Has stuck to his task, maybe not playing the level of darts that he wanted to bring today, but will be learning exponentially. But what we do see from Owen is a change of stem and flight in round four. These are quite 55. vibrant. Yeah, a little bit funky, aren't they? Type of thing that you'd expect a Whitlock to use. 60. Is he going to see a change of look? You might think it's just a change of colour, but I assure you, it's not. 85. That is a change of type of stem and flight. And if you are going to change something, now's not a bad time to do so. 140. He's already lost three games, and most of the time, you can attribute three losses in three matches at the start of Group C to someone who's not going to succeed. 36. But this is a group 
that is fairly tight knit at this stage. But if Owens is to 85. lose this one, you'd fancy that's it. Yeah, even two points from four is difficult to come back from. But none from four, you can forget it, really. Not happy with how he's playing. Mason Whitlock looking to take advantage. It could end up being quite a fruitful day for him 60. if he can beat him and Aaron Beanie. Suddenly six points, he's in the hunt. That's the motivation for sure. But don't think about Aaron yet. Just focus on this guy. This is better. Don't go for the 180. At least he's got his head screwed on this time. Mason, you require 156. I'm still questioning five bull. Nobody's questioning that. Oh, it may just be 257s for Owen. Does leave a slightly awkward double, but he won't mind that. 48. Mason, you require 22. Easy. And 79 remaining with his last dart, then it was a sensible shot. So he'd left a better single to double had he missed. Right through the posts. 11. I'm not sure oh, when you that going to the right-hand side was the right shot there. He might have been better off going to the left and through the darts. Straight to the top of the shop. 96. Mason, you require 11. Two fours for Whitlock. Game shot on a first leg. Mason Whitlock. Just looks way more assured than he did at the start of the day. Second leg. It's Mason to throw first. Game on. I know there are a lot of people out there thinking that Mason was probably invited here because of his name. I can categorically 96. tell you that is not the case. It has everything to do with the fact of how dangerous he's been in darts around this area 85. in the last six months. He's been beating big name players. And with someone this young and this promising, 66. just give them the vehicle to succeed. This is coming from a person who never had that at his age. 100. These are exciting times. You should want to see these talents instead of leaving them out on the street. 43. Just three games left after this. Robert Thornton against Colin Osborne. They were the two favourites with the odds compilers. Osborne favourite. Thornton second favourite. One has lived up to that. The other hasn't. Then Whitlock will take on Beanie. And Bowden will bow out potentially against Kieran Smith if he is to lose that game. What a take Kieran Smith could have, by the way. Four from five when he was... One from 15 in Group A if he beats Bowden in his last game. 42. How many times have we mentioned Kieran Tian? Finishing bottom of Group A and then eventually making Saturday night and winning? It's possible. 46. But is it fair of me to say oh, that nobody's really performed against Kieran today? Could see some fireworks from Mason Whitlock. Oh, he's left himself on double one. Mason, you require 125. Well, it's not going to happen, but Owen Bowden has been the mayor of the broken satnav today. 88. Because he's leaving Owen, some routes that two. people just wouldn't choose. Game shot on a second leg. And they Owen seem to Bowden. work. Third leg. It's Owen to throw first. Game well, he on. hit it in the end. He was. I'm assuming he was just going for a single 19 and missed through it. I wouldn't put anything past him now. 93. Considering some of the stuff he's tried. He might just really, really like leaving strange finishes. 59. He's changing his style now as well. He's not aiming and he's just flowing. He might be an unfinished product. And what I mean by that is he needs to be under these lights to figure out who he wants to be as a dart player. There you can see he's prodding the dart and then he's flowing 21. with it. The rhythm is completely and utterly broken. 
There was almost an air of resignation in the way through the last dart, like it was destined to miss. 42. A slightly more experienced player than one nicknamed The Apprentice would be jumping all over this, wouldn't they? They'd be, I've got you, pal. 135. See, there you go. First two darts were thrown with structure. Dart three, he was on the walk and he didn't aim it. And I hate to be cynical. 43. But as a darts coach myself, what I will say is, what do you expect to happen? 99. Fifty-eight. Oh, and you require ninety-four. Options here. It is double double tops. Seventy-four. The talent is obviously there. Mason, you require one hundred. He's got flair about him. But that talent needs to be polished. Forty-nine. And that's what matches on oh, the stage can give you an opportunity to figure some stuff out. However. If Mason figures this 115 out, Owen's going to be behind 18. again. Mason, you require 115. 15. The shot was still on. 41. Owen, you require two. Game shot on a third leg. Owen Bowden. That's the second leg he's won on double one so far in this match. One of them, Fourth he was leg. left it's on Mason it. Mason to throw first. As you would normally leave it by splitting doubles. And the other time, he left it on purpose. Well, I think I'm about to say a line that I thought I'd never say, but 80. he's 2-1 up and his highest checkout is 2. For his sake, he really wants it to improve. In fact, in the, in the match, three legs completed, the highest checkout is 11. 96. I'm not really sure how you can embellish on that. 100 you can envisage winning a game with four legs of checkouts of eight or less if you're always leaving double four. 30. But you don't necessarily leave double one on purpose all the time. An exhibition player might now start thinking, well, could I do that when every leg on double one? Of course you can. Can win it like thousands of different ways. Let's not forget as well to give him credit. It's arguably the hardest double to hit. Yeah, the bullseye is obviously the smallest, but double one gives you 96. very little margin for error. Now then, he's not taking this out. Fifty-six. Mason. Mason, you require do 150. it. Do it now. And he did try to do it. He took your advice. Trying 80. to produce the magic that the wizard force. Simon Whitlock managed Game with three bullseyes. But instead he finds himself three legs behind, well, two legs behind, three one down. Fifth leg, it's Owen to throw first. Game on. It's only an 82 average, but this is better from Bowden. And now he's starting on 19s. Somebody give this lad a curriculum. And he won't follow it. Last player to really do that here was Lisa 59. Ashton. Kept switching between treble 20s and treble 19s. 46. I haven't really checked into it, but if Bowden's going to get a nickname, it's got to be something to do with his erratic nature. 101. I know what the nickname should be for any darts player with the first name that he's got. 57. Throw in. Throw in Owen Bowden. Not bad, is it? Even if you do see us, saw yourself. 76. Well, he's throwing everywhere in this match. Had Maria O'Brien not taken 95. the nickname of OB being those initials, then he could have taken that one, but no such luck. Mason is not relying on luck here. That's a great approach. Again, he will go for the bullseye. 
to start a combination. 96. Mason, you require 130. This is not the flashy way. It's the right way. Oh, unlucky. A second bullseye 92. would have left him double 16. Oh, he tees up tops instead. Which double do you want to leave? Double 18, then. Game shot. Very well done. Owen Bowden. That was an excellent performance from Owen Bowden. The average just over 82, but considering what we've seen today, that's not bad. And his doubles were very good as well. He was a bit scatty at the start in leaving double one a couple of times, having taken them both. However, a 4-1 victory against Mason Whitlock means that he goes to two points, and that means that everybody has got a win today. So well done, everybody. Now it's a case of going into the last round to see where you can finish. Three games left to go this afternoon then here at the Moda Super Series. Before we get into them, let's show you what has happened so far. Well, Kieran Smith had a great day. He started with that win against Mason Whitlock and has gone on to win three of his four matches after only winning one of 15 in Group A. Colin Osborne, though, his day has been even better, winning four from four and looking to make it a perfect day with a win against Robert Thornton in this next game. Thornton... Could find himself in trouble in the league table. He is one of three players on two points, Mason Whitlock and Owen Bowden, who's just got a victory for the first time against Whitlock. They're all looking like they could be struggling when it comes to breaching the top two. And if Thornton is going to end the down a high, he's going to have to beat the top one, Osborne, who is in action in this clash now. And at the start of the day, Paul, the bookies had these two as... Pretty close favourites to win the group, but one of them has stood up to that mantle. The other one certainly hasn't. Yeah, very fair to see it. I think Colin will be very happy with his points total coming into this last match. And now he can empty the tank to see if he can walk away with 10 points from his day. And it wouldn't be the first time this week. He's done it already this week. 
How many players can you think of who have had two perfect days in a week and still not made Saturday night? I can't think of any. No, I don't think it's ever happened. We do know that it's happened in Group first C leg, where a player's won all five games first. on a Game Thursday, on. then lost all five games on a Friday and not made it through. Yeah, sorry, Scott Walters. That's your weekly mention out of the way. But there are bad days to have good 22. days, if that makes any sense at all. And Thursday can be one of them. I think back to the double start week and Kevin Painter played his best stuff on Wednesday when he was already pretty much out 100. of the running in Group A. And Thursday in Group C, but then it all fell apart again on Friday. Whereas had he done things the 80. other way around, maybe he could have been more in contention. And I think you're right. Look at Damien Moll last week. He had a really bad day on Monday. By Friday, we were talking about him possibly making Saturday. It just so happened that he just missed out. 100. But if you're going to have a bad day, have it on the first day of a group. In the last match as well. And that, remember, was the match that put Jimmy Van Ski through. 96. We had footage of him backstage watching two matches that needed to go his way to get through on Friday. He got through, and you know the rest. Turned out being the best week we've ever had in Portsmouth. I don't even think that's up for debate anymore. Start to finish, it was gripping. 82. I'm not sure this group C is going to be anywhere near as gripping as last week's, but if you're confident 83. in seeing who's going to go through this group at this stage, then you know more than I do about darts. You might have Osborne on eight, Kieran Smith on six, and people chasing, but someone you require 123. who's found it tough to average over 80 today in Kieran Smith. Do you think he's safe? I don't. Do I think Osborne's safe? No, I don't. 40. Robert, you require 81. Someone could have a brilliant Friday and deny both of them. 41. I just wonder what's left in the tank for Robert. He is very, very much struggling. And Osborne will be more than aware of that. Can he bed the ball? 52. Long way away. Robert, you require 40. Nice guide. Game shot on the first leg. Nice, nice shot. Doesn't care about the leg difference at this point. He just wants to get Second the points. Second leg. It's Colin to throw first. Game on. A win would equalise a certain Mr. Beanie. 125. If he wins by one leg, he will equalise Aaron's leg difference. Albeit with Aaron having his last game against Whitlock next. 45. Having played myself for quite a long time, Murph, when you're playing this level of play after being 100. one of the best in the world, it's hard to stomach. It's really hard to accept. Whether you're injured, whether you're lacking confidence 45. or not, you still expect to play at a very competitive level. And every single cell in Robert's body at the minute might be hurting. He will continue to try. 59. But the one big thing he's fighting right now is his mind. Interestingly, in preparation for this match, I, I noted one of the days in your career when you were doing stuff like that and you must have felt like you were the best in the world because Robert Thornton and Colin Osborne actually played a head-to-head -head at the 2011 UK Open. And in that tournament, if any viewers here are a little bit young and they don't remember Paul Nicholson as much as a player, on that same day, you beat Gary Anderson and Phil Taylor in back-to-back -back matches. What must that have felt like? It was a pretty good day. 61. I remember everything about that day. What I was wearing, what I ate, what I did. Just one of the great days of my life. Next one wasn't great. Losing to James Wade, but... Yeah, that, that, that Saturday in Bolton is, is, is a treasured day for me. Wade went on to win that tournament. Robert Thornton then 
won the title the next year. 83. Colin, you require 48. I've got history with both of these players. That was our era. Turning around that decade from the noughties to the tens. Speaking of tens. 28. Robert, you require 87. Well, this would be naughty, I suppose. Double nine. Game Thornton finds. Is he going to be the one that scuppers the perfect day for Colin Osborne? Naughty and yet nice. Third leg. It's Robert to throw They've first. They've played three times this week Game and Osborne's on. got the beating of him. Two games to one so far. But that win for Thornton came on Monday. And it feels like a long time ago. 29. My first ever PDC title came beating Robert in the final. My first ever final in a PDC tournament was against Robert, which he beat me in. My first ever win at Blackpool was against Colin. My first ever European championship, I lost to Colin. These two have got not inches in my book when I write it, but pages. They've met many times themselves, particularly here now at the Super Series and Live League before it, but before when they were on the Pro Tour, nine meetings and Thornton won five of them. So pretty evenly matched their head-to-head. And they're guaranteed to play again one time tomorrow. Twenty-eight. So they're playing again on Saturday. That's good news for both of them. Yeah, both players that have joined the 100 club at the Super Series in the last couple of days. Conan Whitehead could join that club, I believe, tonight. Do they get 100. anything special for that? Um, just a little graphic on the screen saying 100 Super Series wins. Yeah, that's what it is, by the way. Victories, not appearances. There's a lot of people who would like that, though. He'd like something a bit bigger than 100 here. Didn't matter that he didn't do it in that visit. Doesn't have to stay on the treble 20. There is an argument for bull. Simon Whitlock would use the bull here. 60. And the reason for that is if you get 25, you leave 59, which means it's single to double combination instead of needing a treble still. 83. Colin, you require 64. 64, though, is a nice finish. Gives you a little bit of margin for missing. Game shot on the third and Osborne leg. does Colin not Osborne. miss the double. So he halves the deficit in this game. If you would like a little bit of insight into flag, Collins' day Collins on the outer ring. First. Game on. He's now got 17 hits at a double today. And he hasn't finished. That's very, very good. It may even be 20 by the end of this match. 140. But he's had 59 darts at double in four games. 100. I'm not sure we keep records on how many darts at a double someone's had in a daily campaign, but Osborne's had 15 in his first game, 13 in the next two, and 18 in his fourth game. Sixty-four darts at a double all day long. He may even break seventy. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw that. Seventy. He's done well there. Two darts in the five, and he was so angry about doing it that the only next result was going to be a treble twenty. Forty. Well, he's done it quite often, hasn't he, today, Colin Osborne? He's found himself behind in matches and just turned them around very quickly. 3-1 down earlier in his very first match of the day. Managed to win that one 4-3. He was 2-0 down in his previous match. Went on to win that one. 2-0 down in this one. He's looking good. 60. Colin, you require 74. Might just look at 54 here. In fact, he's going to go 42. Against his own game plan, really, but he does leave tops. 34. Do you know the affectionate nickname of these two players from the tour back over 10 years ago? What people used to call them? 
82. What, as a collective or separately? Colin, you require 40. Yeah, a bit of both. I used to call Colin Sharon. Because of Osborne. Oh, okay. And it's Chalk Thornton, right? Yeah, Get Chalk. Yeah. Four flag, yeah, chocolate. Colin Osborne. There's a... Jockey, isn't there, that goes under that Fifth nickname? Fifth flag, it's Robert to throw Same first. name, Robert Thornton. Game on. But it's neck and neck in this one now, 2-2. Two, two. There's quite a few affectionate nicknames. That... Why would they call him Sharon, not Ozzy? Because that was already his nickname. <laughs> it was just a bit boring. You knew mine, right? Jack. Jack. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing for people. It was, a, it was more of a code, wasn't it? So you could talk about people. <laughs> We're breaking the code here on Thursday afternoon. There was 123. One, one player who was referred to as Sally as well. I'll leave that one to <laughs> you guys. That's one of the best ones. 60. I think at one point they were calling Hendo Bigfoot. Bigfoot and the Hendersons. If you're a little bit lacking in years in your life, 60. you might not remember that series. Yeah, I, I was where I came from. Everyone's known as known by their profession. One hundred and eight. So you'd have Dave the Butcher and Johnny Plummer. I was known as Darts Chris. Darts Chris. Twenty-one. He didn't take that on X or Twitter, as it was. Well, good darts, Colin, in his previous visit. Might be good darts in this visit as well. What do you fancy? He's not, he's not going to lay up. Oh, he might. 99. It's one of those Probably borderline numbers, 139, statistically, where it's about the border of where you could lay up. Players rarely do it. And Robert Thornton really fancied that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. 88. Colin, you require 25. Now Colin will fancy three straight legs. Two eights. And it's for a break of throw. 21. That could be costly. Robert, you require 51. Well, it'd be three tops. Game shot on a That's fifth exactly what he Robert gets. Thornton. Even when he looks like he's beaten, he won't be beaten. Sixth flag. It's he's like a scrambled egg that refuses to be scrambled. Thirty-six. Let's face facts. This is a must-win game for Robert. Yeah, he could still be here on Friday, couldn't he? He's got a quirk, Robert. You know. Forty-five. You for a meal with him, he never finishes it. He used to, for a few years, he'd order loads and eat about a quarter of it. It was infuriating. <laughs> Not as infuriating as James Hubbard, though, the former World Youth Champion, who never finished a drink. There's a few here that have never bought one. 41. I also know a story, but I'm, we're, we're doing a few tales from the two. I'm not going to name the person, but I also know a story of a, a well-known darts personality that doesn't order anything when everyone else goes for food, and then... Just eats theirs, whatever they've left over. 49. I think I know who you're talking about as well. And then there's a very, very well-known dart player who orders everything off the menu and just takes little bits of every plate. Doesn't care about how much it costs. Hundred and seventy three for Colin Osborne Colin, you require and three three as these two heavyweight darting names collide for the fourth time this week. Sixty may well be going the distance. Sixty the trading sixties excellent grouping from both players. With a tiny little hop of Osborne. 
And the shot is still on if he wants it. Just ask, mate. Save yourself the journey. Seventy. Got there eventually. There's a gap between the two averages in this game. But Can nobody's hit the heights 40. today. And I mean nobody. Game shot on a sixth leg. Colin Osborne. Osborne levels and therefore still has that chance. To go through the card with a perfect day's play. Game on. If he can win this last leg decider against the throw, then it will be five out of five for Osborne. And looking at the way that the field is falling, I might already feel like that's enough. 22. Worst case scenario is eight points and plus seven. A very strong thing to have as a guarantee going into Friday. 55. And he has got this knack. Do you remember in the series final when he lost to Littler? He didn't play at all well in his first game of the night, but then he played brilliantly in his second game. He's got great powers of recovery. Looking to stick one straight between the posts. Just like that. Well, I'd like to say just like Janino from Middlesbrough Football Club, but Janino is not his favourite player of all time. Do you know who is? 44. Fabrizio Ravanelli. Stuart Ripley. Oh, Played for Blackburn as well. Didn't go for flair then, did he, in football? <laughs> no, he likes a blonde winger just going up and down the line. Sticking in good crosses. He played, He came on loan to Sheffield Wednesday once Stuart Ripley. He did head of the ball more than he crossed it. 85. Premier League winner, though. Colin, you require 170. Who's the winner in this one? Not going to do it in style, but that might not matter at all. 40. The visit as a whole might... Nice guide. Can he get 76 left? That's a brilliant 140. Colin, you require he will feel hopeful now. It's up to Osborne to shut the door. 75. Robert, you require 76. This to prevent Osborne... Completing a perfect day. 56. But the dart diverts from the double, and now Colin, Colin can claim 55. that honour. He has had match darts against him today in his first match. He survived all five. Now it's 55 to be perfect again. Game shot. And the For match. the second day Colin this Osborne. week, he's won five from five, but in Group C, it's put him in the chairman's chair. At the top of the table. So, as he leaves the stage, you can see how happy he is with his day's work. And that is the best performance we've seen today. 87.03. Decent amount of percentage on the doubles. 30% is very, very, very effective today. But in every game he's played today, he's had more than 10 darts at double. And three times, he's had 13 darts at a double. And every single time, he has hit the requisite amount. As for Thornton... He's going to have to settle for two points today. What will be the case for Whitlock and Beanie when we come back?
Another win for Colin Osborne, and he will go into Friday at the top of the table on 10 points. And a leg difference of plus nine, but that's a byproduct of what has been a very productive day for Colin. It may now be a question as to who will join him in Saturday. However, if you think Colin is safe, think again, because we have seen somebody have a perfect Thursday and everything came crashing down on Friday over a year ago for Scott Walters. So he will not be safe unless he wins at first. least one more game tomorrow. Game but there are plenty of people behind Colin questing for the rest of the day and into tomorrow to see who is going to join him. That's a great start for Mason Whitlock. I'm joined one more time by Lewis Martin. What have you thought of this afternoon's session, Lewis? Well, we've seen some 41. quality performances from Colin Osborne. Again, winning over Robert Fulton there. And a big shout out to everybody watching, especially those watching from down under. Uh, watching Mason Whitlock 84. here, of course, with a great 180 to kick off the leg. And he'll want to take control and get another win on the board here. I think he'll be beaming from confidence having gotten that win against Robert Fulton. Um, be disappointed not to follow that up with another win, but he's got a good chance here against Aaron Beanie, who has been quality on the doubles 58. today. That's been his kind of standout. Um, but himself will be perhaps disappointed that he didn't win one or two more games. And, of course, to lose 4-0. No one wants to do that, but this is 97. his chance again to prove himself back in competition after a little layoff. Right. It doesn't get much better than that. There's a lot to admire about this first leg of the contest from Mason. And if I may divert for just a second... No matter what happens in this game, everybody in the chasing Fulton. pack would like Bowden to win the last it's game. The first but first, Mason Whitlock. Mason Whitlock is starting to play some decent stuff. That was a very good 14-dart leg. Second His best leg of the day. To throw first. Game if he's starting to get comfortable up there, then people have got to take notice. That's a little snippet as to what he can do. It's now a question of, can you put the game together? We've only had one ton plus average all week, and that came from Thornton on Monday. It was always going to be a really tough act to follow from last week. Definitely, but kicking off very early in the game, of course. We can't read too much into it, but with a solid average of 113. He'd like to keep that one up if he can, then that will definitely make the headlines. 57. And there are plenty of headlines. It's not just the local news and things like that anymore. It's about social media channels and who these people 100. are influencing by doing well on this stage. Need I say any more about Ashley Coleman? But 57. just think about the effect that some of these players will have on the people watching. Every time we have a broadcast, somebody is inspired to pick up their darts. 59. I just wonder, when people are watching Mason, if they're watching from down under, are they inspired to do what he is about to do? which is to embark on what could be a successful 100. darts career. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of extra pressures on young darts players these days, with social media being such an important part. And the following that we saw Ashley Common uh, gain and continue to gain through his YouTube channel. Mason, you require 147. And as Mason here looks at 147, um, kind of going into the next leg, it'd be good to know from you, Paul, 60. what what are the differences that players have to face, young players especially, have to face today that didn't exist in the past? Good question. It will be answered in the next leg. 57. Let's see if Mason can take a 2-0 lead. 87. Oh, yeah, lovely dart. Game shot on a lovely finish. Leg. Mason Whitlock. This is more like it. It's vintage Whitlock. Third leg. It's Mason to of throw sorts. first. 
<laughs> but answer your question. When I joined the pro ranks in 2008, we had Facebook. Twitter was 29. not very well known. I think Friends Reunited was still around, which is showing my age. But but social media wasn't 45. a huge thing. It was more to do with keeping in touch with relatives and friends around the world. It was a great tool. But very quickly, 42. it became a way of showing people what you were doing, as in how well you were playing. People's pages became very important. But now we live in a society... Where everything you do, everything you like, everything you repost, everything you say is scrutinized. It wasn't like that back then. Well, we see in all sorts of sports, crossovers between the YouTube and social media world and sport. We see in boxing, social media stars. We've even seen in wrestling, the previous weekend, social media stars appearing on screen. Is it important for players to build that profile or would you say to those players forget about it focus on getting in that practice board and putting the darts because those will speak for themselves talent first presence later that's what i'd say if you're a great dart player you can have a great career if you're a personality and you can't back it up with the talent you'll go nowhere what i will say about ashley coleman is i didn't know a great deal about him before he came here one thing he proved when he was here, he can play. And that's the most important thing. Ninety-three. That first start has plagued him a little bit today, but his recovery skills in the recent matches have been much improved. If he leaves today with four points... And a decent performance against Aaron, he's going to be pleased. 58. And just watch out for him tomorrow if he's playing more like this. Double 16. Very good. However, he has been gifted time to take care of these legs because Aaron has stayed in the mid 70s average and has not had a dart at double yet. I did fear at the start of the day because this is one of Aaron's first tournaments back, that maybe playing multiple games in the day might 100. have its toll. It doesn't look that way, but on the stat screen it does. And dealing with an injury from a mental 58. perspective as well must be quite challenging, taking that time away from competition. As we referred to with Aaron Beanie in previous games, he's a, he's a player known for his composure in key moments. Is that something 85. you can lose from time away from competition? I know that you, you yourself, you've had time away from, from competition and returned to the biggest stage of them all at the players at the World Championship, sorry. Yeah, I think it's something that you can, you can grow with. And weirdly, I, I would liken it to my golf game after I had multiple wrist surgeries. I almost forgot 81. all of my weaknesses. And that might be something that Aaron's going through right now mentally. You might think, when I was a tour card holder, I developed certain frailties. But by coming back after a period of being away from the game, I can't even remember what those frailties were. That's well, the way I would look at it. And it's a follow-up question too. Does Mason 85. having his first tournament here mean he has no scars from previous um, tournaments? Oh, he's brand new. He is unscarred. 58. Oh, I require 150. Did you do that on purpose? They're all doing it. Aaron may miss. Will Mason hit? 34. He couldn't Mason, do it earlier. Can he do it now? Do it now. Oh, oh. Mason, you tease. If his dad was watching that, he would have had a, a smile the size of the moon. Oh, I wish you could hear the gasps around this arena here. But Aaron Beanie here is not out of a leg. Oh, he might be now. Mason, you require 70. 20 70. ball, 20 ball. Ah, oh, unfortunate. Asking too much. But how about double nine? 
Oh, he's bust it. No score. That was a match dart to finish his day with a 4-0 victory against a former tour card holder. Game shot on the fourth Pins line. it. Arambini. It's about composure, and he's got it in bags. Not out of this Spit game. Flag. Back in it's competition, but showing first. that... Game on. Aaron Beanie in those key moments has nerves of steel. Back 96. to 3-1. This game is far from over. Is the experience here going to start to play into this game? Is is Aaron Beanie now perhaps going to build confidence? And is Mason going to start to have those little questions in his head, do you think? Or, having spoken to him previously, do you think he's made of different stuff? I think we'll find out over the next few years what he's made of. But in the short term, I'd have to say that he'll be drawing on a lot of local experience playing in what is one of the hotbeds in English darts. This county of Hampshire, 100. where we are based, it's like a magnet for great dart players in neighbouring counties. Dorset, Wiltshire, 97. Sussex. Berkshire, they all come to this county to play local competitions. And Mason has been playing those competitions recently. He will be ready. But is he ready enough? He hits a crucial 180 there. Leaves himself on 81. 48. This is not a bad game now. Aaron, you require 81. We're starting to see the best darts that we've seen from these two all day. Double 16. 65. This would be somewhere to finish Mason, your you day. Oh, it looks good. Now it looks even better. Oh, Mason Whitlock. Mason Whitlock. Mason Whitlock. That is a stunning checkout to finish your day. If you had the question in your mind all day long, why was he brought here? He's just answered it with an exclamation mark. The apprentice is here to play and he is in with a shout of qualifying through Group C. He walks away with four points for the day, but will be more in the mix if indeed Kieran Smith loses the last match. 85.94 the average, but look at the last check at 164 and overall his best doubling performance of the day. Aaron Beanie will have to settle for four points himself, but he's now got company in the shape of Mason Whitlock. The last game is coming your way in due course.
That was cl- quite the climax, wasn't it? Easy for me to say. However, we go into the final match now, and this is a huge match for Kieran Smith, isn't it? Because if he beats Owen Bowden, there is a four-point cushion between the top two and the rest. However, if Owen wins and he goes to four points, it's only two between second, third, fourth, and fifth. And that would put Robert Thornton First potentially at right the first. bottom of the list going into Friday. Game Who off. thought that would possi- was possible at the start of this morning? However, these two, who represent the amateur dart circuit, and I've done them proud today. Who's going to walk 90. away with the points? Chris Murphy joins me once again. Yeah, we and we did see Bowden, didn't we? Play pretty well in his four woman against Mason Whitlock, though Whitlock recovered from that. Fifty-seven. Fantastically to beat Aaron Beanie four-one in his previous game. So there is no guarantee that Smith's going to carry on. Having won three from four today, and it's going to be really interesting if he doesn't, because you would have just four points between second and bottom. It would be Robert Thornton if Bowden won this match. 46. Still determined to go wherever he likes on the dartboard, isn't he? Yeah, he's a no sat nav player. Just 60. get behind the wheel and see where it leads you. Players like this, they call them spotters nightmares. 55. Imagine trying to choke for him locally. It would be really confusing. 100. I wonder if these two have ever bumped into each other. They're not that far apart. Gloucestershire and Dorset. 60. There might be a tournament in the middle of them that they might have attended. Well, me and you'll chat after this game, but some of the viewers in the YouTube chat are giving us their assessment, and particularly on Mason Whitlock. First game, he was very nervous, but has been getting better and better as the day went on. Some people were judging him on his debut 47. and gave him a hard time, but actually he has improved 60. a lot since that first match. And they think that watching Mason grow will be pretty interesting. I think he'll be hoping he doesn't grow literally much more. He's tall enough. But the, the two people I kind of really would want to talk about in depth 60. would be Mason Whitlock at a short Kieran sample size, required. but maybe 20. even more interesting, Kieran Smith, longer sample size, lost 12 games, took him 13 to get a win. And he's since the then, leg, Smith. he's really turned a corner, hasn't he? A confidence player, potentially. And I say that word at the end of that Second sentence leg, because of the level of play today. If he'd have been in last week's Group C or last week's Group A, you just want to try and think about how many points he'd get in those situations. I think it's fair to say that Kieran's been more comfortable in this group. But the level of play has allowed him to find another level of confidence. 58. I, in turn, will be fascinated to see what we get from Grunewald and Whitehead later. Up against some seasoned regulars here at the Motor Super Series. 44. Be sure to join us from 10 p.m. local time. Wherever you're tuning in from around the world, set your alarms. Whether they are in Europe or around the world, hope you can join us. 64. At this point, you would have to fancy Kieran Smith of getting the job done. He seems to have a bit more energy left in the tank, but we're talking about a player who's playing... His fourth consecutive day of five games in a day. 31. He'll be very used to this now. Let's not forget this will be the opening game tomorrow as well. So if Smith can win both, suddenly 85. he's on 10 points with Here Colin Osborne. 90. And a six-point cushion would be created between the top two and the rest. That's not good news for anybody who's trying to 65. chase 
Oh, when you require well, one. Kieran Smith couldn't get one bullseye. And nor could Owen Bowden. Hey, Paul Nicholson alongside 80. me shaking his head a little bit there. Do you think Kieran that's a, the wrong time 25. to do something like that? I think that's the fourth time we've seen somebody try it today. Is it the new norm? Game's Great dart. 2-0. So one of the first players, I know it would have been done in exhibitions years ago, but one of the first players I heard of doing it in competitive matches was Ryan Third Joyce. Leg. It's Kieran to throw first. And his darts laid down quite flat. And he... He goes through this sort 58. of mental conversation that he believes that throwing three darts at the same target, however small, he's more likely to hit than going for different targets. That's the Ryan 24. Joyce formula. And he did it in a last leg decider against John Henderson in a pro tour match when Henderson was on a double and took it out. And it took John Henderson a moment to, to realise that Joyce just always does that. But that would have made you sick, wouldn't it? Just a little bit. 24. I can see hand on heart. I've never gone for that in a competitive match. I just fancy the size of a treble over the size of the bull to give me a shot. 125. I can't say that hand on heart in the 2010 Australian Open when I was in the semi-finals with Priestley. 96 that I was sitting on tops for the match. Dennis had 150 and went for bull first dart, and it had me all ends up. I missed three darts, and he ended up winning the match. Whether he did it just to play with my mind, or whether it was a concerted effort to take it that way, doesn't matter. He won the match. He went on to win the title. I've even seen players go for it, hit the bull, but leave it really awkward, and, and still persevere when they could go treble 20 tops from that point. Smith will go for the bull here. Options, but with his opponent. Yeah, I was going to say, 34. with his opponent on a, a high finish, it didn't make sense to go tops, tops. 59. Kieran, you require 48. Here we have a case of one player that's playing decent darts, one that is not. And that is a 3-0 lead for Kieran. So far, so very, 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 very good. Leg difference in a great position. Points-wise, looking very promising. Forty-eight. One hundred and forty. It's amazing how things change, isn't it? When Kieran left the building yesterday, he'd have thought to himself, One hundred and forty. Well, this is hard. What's he going to be thinking at the end of today? Well, we may well find out. Ninety-six. Kind of a chat with him at the end of the day. But what's Owen going to be thinking? He's kind of giggling away. It's almost like an embarrassed little laugh, isn't it? 100. You don't know how you're going to react in these situations until you're put under the lights. That's just a fact. And not everybody succeeds. 98. Ask Kian Sun of China. Had one of the best and worst times, didn't he? 83. Yeah, against Kieran, you require Corey Cadby. Started with him falling over the hockey on his entrance to the stage. Never a good sign. 60. Oh, and you require 130. I'm not even going to guess which way he's going to go. I will now. Weird, that was really good. Kieran, you Just lost the line. What a chance for 4-0. And a fantastic Thursday. 
Choices. 47 remaining. Chooses double 16. And hits it to sign off in style. And that is how you turn your week around at the Moda Super Series. Kieran Smith, who could not buy a win for love nor money, went 12 matches without in Group A, winning just one from 15. But in Group C, it is four out of five and four of the best against Owen Bowden in that last match of the afternoon. Four out of nine on the doubles. Very decent stuff from Smith against Bowden, who really wasn't at the races in that match and will finish day one at the foot of the table. But Smith is in one of the provisional qualifying places. And we are going to have a chat with him after this short break. <laughs> Well, how do you turn your prospects around on a Moda Super Series week? We've got a man here who can tell us, because Kieran Smith has done that today. Congratulations on what's been a very good day. Four wins out of five. How are you feeling? A uh, bit better than a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Glad Wednesday was out of the way, but uh, finally be feet a little bit now. A bit nervous, but let it dart through the talking now. Coming into this week as a, an ADC qualifier, what were your expectations and how quickly did you have to start revising them? Um, I knew I had the game. Um, like I said, the first few darts was a little bit iffy. A um, bit low, first few days. Um, I was trying to chuck them the last day, see what happened. Got myself the first win and I'm um, just going for now. How important was that first win? Because if you'd come through Group A without a win, would that have possibly infected today? Um, a little bit. I know I've got a game. It's just doing it up there. I come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just treating it as a county game, really. But then I see the venue and all the lights, and you can't treat it as a county game. You've got to step up a little bit. Yeah, I don't think there are many county venues no, as good as this. No, definitely not. How much have you learned about yourself in the first four days this week? And how much can you, and I don't mean to ask you two questions at once, but how much have you learned this week? And how much can you use that for tomorrow? I've learned a lot. Um, like I said, I know I've got the game, but some of the players here are ridiculous. Um, like I said, the darts are... Uh, there's a bit of emotion coming out then. But, um, hopefully come back tomorrow and do the same again you mentioned some of the players that you've got to beat I mean we just saw you beating Robert Thornton there you've yes. done that twice now what is it like to get wins over players who've got the, the CV the Royal of Honour that they have obviously everyone knows Robert you know what he can do um, his name is Conan some of the um, the Dutch lads I can't remember Victor and Corny I don't know what to expect of them but they don't, all of them, everyone's got the game here. So you've just got to do your best and hope for the best, really. It has been a day today. I mean, you've been through it this week, struggled for the first couple of days, as you said. It, it's been a day where other players have struggled um, and you've had to take advantage of that. And we saw an example of that in the match you've just played where you played some really good stuff and finished it in style as well with a nice 107 checkout. How does it feel to 
to get such a dominant win after going through a week where that's kind of been happening to you? Um, like I said, the first few days, I didn't really... Only the scoring was there a little bit, but the doubles are shocking, really. Um, that's really the case of my career. I usually score quite well, miss the doubles. Um, so I was here as ADC player. Obviously, they're here on merit and invitation, obviously. Um, so just do your best and hope for the best. Your doubles were a lot better today. I mean, yeah. you've won more legs today than you've won all week. And that's got to make you feel good. And considering just how important that last game was, you've now got a four-point cushion between you and the bottom four. I mean, you've got to be feeling good about that. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I know with doubles aren't the best at some times. Um, scoring has always been there, really. It's just converting the scoring into finishing. And if I finish, I know I can mix for the best. What's the scene like in Gloucestershire at the minute? Because I know that a lot of the attention for Gloucestershire goes with James Horrell. Um, I don't know if you know James or if he's been yeah. some sort of inspiration to you, but what's the scene like in Gloucestershire at the minute? Uh, it's quite relaxed. I was a friendly with everyone. Um, obviously, James has obviously gone his own ways um, to Buckinghamshire, I think. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of motivation, a lot of confidence and support. Um, so I just try to bounce off that, really. I'm sure you'll be looking for some of that support, hopefully on Saturday night. Um, let's just hopefully. go through some of the dot the I's, cross the T's from today. Here are the results. Um, we mentioned it, Paul, right at the start of the day, that first match between Mason Whitlock and Kieran, that that result could be crucial for either player. Do you think that's how it panned out? Yeah, I think so. Starting on the right foot, uh, obviously getting a win against someone who looked a little bit nervous uh, coming into his first game, I'm sure... Kieran knows all about that after Monday morning. But getting that win and starting on the right foot has proven to be very valuable because we've got a guy sitting next to us right now who's got four wins out of five today and has a fabulous chance of qualifying for Saturday on debut. And starting with the right kind of victory, and it was a battling victory at that, has just stood him in good stead for the rest of the day, possibly the whole group. It's your first time here. We're just going to show you the group table now. But I'm going to ask you the question that I'll probably normally ask Paul. But as soon as we've got you, what do you think you need to do tomorrow to make sure that second or even first place is your own and you get through to finals night? Um, I was at work this morning thinking, three wins are doing me today. If I get three wins today, then try and bounce off that tomorrow. Obviously, four wins today. Same again tomorrow. Probably the first few games, I think that'll be enough. Hopefully. Um, if not, do your best and look for the best. I think it makes a good point, actually, because considering what we went through last Friday with Group C, don't even think about getting to 12 points. Get to 14 or 16 and just make sure of it and get it done as quickly as possible because the last thing you want to do is be in a gripping situation where leg difference comes into it. We do have a, a bit of a difference this week, don't we? We've got a couple of players that are starting to open up a gap between the rest of the field in this group. I just want to talk about a couple of the players other than Kieran. Um, Colin Osborne winning all of his matches for the second time this week. What about that? Just such a gutsy player, isn't he? Is he playing his best darts this week? Absolutely not. He's winning some key moments. His doubles are cooperating, but he's getting enough opportunities as well. He had 72 darts at a double today. I've never seen anything like that in a daily campaign. But the fact that he was gifted that amount of opportunities, or indeed he created that many, you've got to give him credit for that. And he won 20 legs compared to this guy's 18. They've bossed this group today. It's just a question of whether they do it again tomorrow. And then on the other side of the coin, Robert Thornton, second favourite before a dart was thrown, hasn't gone his way at all today. No, he's, he's not playing his best darts. I think he's the person who's got the only ton plus average of the week. However, when you look at uh, the, the facial expressions, the, the comfort of him on the hockey, it's not there. So whatever he needs to do overnight to get himself into a, a mould of, of winning again, he needs to do it. Otherwise, it's not going to be Saturday for Robert. Final word to you, Kieran. Just the whole experience, really. What has that been like for you? Forget the actual performance of the actual darts, but just being here, playing in this venue, uh, people watching at home. What has all that been like for you and, and your profile as a darts player? Buzzing. Can't put it into words, really. Obviously, qualify a few with ADC. Uh, but waiting a little bit of time to show everyone what I got. But um, hopefully I could do it the next day and hopefully Saturday as well.
half the job done. Good luck. Yeah. Well done today. Paul, thanks, thanks for your company this afternoon. We'll see you again this evening. And we hope to see you again this evening as well. The action will resume. Group B will get underway from 10pm live here on the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. And then Group C with Kieran Smith trying to get through to finals night will resume tomorrow. But we will see you tonight. Thank <laughs> you.